Greetings, this is Obi-Wan Kenobi, and I have drifted into the underworld. The Star Wars underworld. I have a bad feeling about this. Here we go. We must go to the lower levels. The underworld. You've taken your first step into a larger world. You're after something. Ben. Since I've started the underworld, I've met so many great friends. Chris. I grew up in the 1990s, and mall packaging is nostalgic for me. Dominic. What I love most about Star Wars is that it's fun, and it's all-round good times. So, this is where the fun begins. May the Force be with us. This thing really moves! Woo! I like this! I can't believe you came all this way to see me. Why am I not in the intro? I gotta come up with a snappy line. What's up, Star Wars fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Star Wars Underworld podcast. We are your source for the latest breaking Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion each and every week. And this week, we're going to be breaking down the newest episode of Star Wars The Bad Batch, Harbinger, or Harbinger, depending on how you say it in your region. Um, Harbinger. Um, and we'll catch up. Harbinger, if you will. It's uh, it's the Harbinger. Um, Maybe we. Um, and we'll catch up on the latest and greatest Star Wars news. Plus, we promise we will answer all of your burning questions. Every single one. <laughs> um, and all this and much more in this episode of the Star Wars Underworld Podcast. My name is Chris and joining me is my good friend, Mr. Dominic Jones. Why do I not have a social media handle? Anyway. Welcome, Dominic. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, Ben. I have my social media handle. It's there. Good. I'll, um, it's great to be back for a, an episode of the Star Wars Underworld Vintage Collection, uh, which is what I'm going to call these episodes when we don't have Hannah. Um, yeah, very excited to talk about this episode. Very excited to talk about the return of uh, Asajj Ventress and uh, just get into the, all this stuff. Some questions we've been asking about Omega since the very, very beginning. Uh, it's going to be a great show. Heck yes. Also joining us, it's Ben Hart, the Star Wars guy. And then there were three. Wow. Okay. This, this is just kicking it old school tonight, man. What, what, yeah, what, yeah. This is uh, surprising. Um, but uh, yeah, not, 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 look, we miss Hannah, but this is, this is going to be a good episode. Nonetheless, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best without her. And uh, yeah, this is, this is old school in a lot of different ways. Old school that we're talking about Asajj Ventress. Asajj yeah. Ventress is back in <laughs> Star Wars, guys. And we're talking about an episode with her in it. This is kind of wild. And uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot to get into. What was the first season of The Clone Wars that this show covered? Was it like season four or five? What would it have been? Ooh, you had to ask. Yeah, because like I'm, I'm thinking about it, like, you know, we've talked about how there are no, like Ventress hasn't been on screen since the end of season five of The Clone Wars. Like she just has just sort of vanished from everything. And now I'm like, I'm like, for a second there, I'm like, did we ever re- have we ever reviewed a Ventress story on this on this uh, on this show? I think we have. We must have. And we I'm sure we reviewed Dark Disciple at some point in there. Uh, I know we had Christy Golden on many uh, many moons ago to talk right. about the book, but yeah, I it's, think uh, it's we fun. started around season three. I think. Okay, so we would have got some Thanks. some Ventress episodes in there then. Yeah, that was actually like that was peak peak Ventress, like back half yeah. of season three with yeah. the Night Sisters are again. Yeah, because Ventress was a, sh- a character who like came in and out of Clone Wars, right? Like she was a just big part of the movie, big part of season one, not in season two at all. I remember like I even remember not watching really season like- two because season two was the last season that I binged before I was caught up in watching week to week. And I remember going, hey, what happened to that bald character? Where did she go? <laughs> What she? What happened to her? And then going the to celebration, harpy. the hairless harpy. Yeah, and then going to celebration five and Dave Filoni be like, "We got these great Ventra stories coming up," and I was like, "Finally, finally!" Little did I know that um, Asajj and I would uh, share the same hairstyle for a brief period before she had to go and ruin it by growing her hair out. Yeah, where's your I, mohawk, Dominic? Yeah. <laughs> I, I need last- bald representation back in Star Wars, guys. So two weekends ago, I was at Toronto Comic Con, right, and um, there was a Ventress cosplayer, and I was walking with uh, with my friend Dan Johnson from Order Four One Six, and we're 
we're like walking around and we see the Ventress cosplayer. We're like, oh, sick, Ventress. That's awesome. It's going to be, she's going to be on Bad Batch again. This is going to be cool. And then I, I, we sort of walked about like 10 steps past this cosplayer. And I looked at Dan. I got, I said, like, I think we have to go back to the Ventress cosplayer. He goes, oh, you want to get a picture? I'm like, yeah, I just had an idea. Oh, no. And I don't know if I want to do it. And he's like, what? And I just sort of took my hat off and he goes, <gasps> you have to you have to oh and so we God. went and we took this picture i was completely unprepared otherwise for the picture it's on my instagram account and i've just like i've like done for the day i've got my like big bulky ahsoka hoodie on i'm like i'm not not in the like picture taking mood and, and then but i'm like i gotta get i gotta get this and i go up to the cosplayer and she sees what i'm doing she sees me take off the hat she just hands me the lightsaber and she goes you've earned this <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting there. So we took this picture. You can see it on, on my Instagram. One of many highlights uh, from Toronto Comic. I just can't wait for the Star Wars Underworld Rayside crossover episode where you paint yourself gray. <laughs> That'll be something. If I go to Australia, maybe we'll do that episode. Yes. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. Forget the like purple like yes lip extensions. I don't know what to call that. Sort of like the sort upside of like, down Joker smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right there. Yeah, go with that. Oh my <laughs> goodness, goodness, goodness. All right, so we're gonna be getting to talking more about about Ventress and all the other great stuff in in a brief second. But first, we want to remind everybody watching on YouTube to punch that subscribe button, Chewy. You can super chat with us if you're watching us live. You can become a channel member if you're not or if you are. Um, and you can also, if you're just listening to us, uh, you can subscribe on your favorite podcast app and leave a review. Make sure you check out the SW Network Discord. We got game nights. We got watch parties. Ben, what's the next thing that's happening we no. are watching more of Young Jedi Adventures <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> in our desperate attempt to get to something else. <laughs> Not that we don't enjoy Young Jedi Adventures, but there's just a lot of episodes. And then they and extended the season, and it's a lot more episodes now. You're dragging it out till the Acolyte, yeah. and so, so that we don't have to go out of order. June 4th, then you just gotta the get Phantom there. Menace. Get the June 4th. And then you can do Acolyte for for eight weeks or however long it's gonna be on for. Yeah. And then then you can watch the Phantom Menace. Just gotta there drag go. it out. Drag it out. You, you and Joel, you guys can work it out. <laughs> awesome. Oh so all of that fun. Uh it, the link is in the description to our Discord. Um, I, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Um, if you're not on Discord, I highly highly recommend it it's it's a really really awesome community it's like a supercharged forum it's like all the best things about social media and not many of the worst things um so it's it's all just our community over there no no rando so it's it's super fun super fun um to, to check it out and but if you must stay on social media at the SWU on threads is the only acceptable place to to be <laughs> how long are we gonna drag this bit out I don't, I don't... as long as the freaking banner is queued, yeah. <laughs> which there's probably some banners queued in here that um no i thankfully cleared them out i mean we yeah. still got our little ipc See? one but <laughs> i cleared out most of the ones like a few months ago thankfully that we hadn't used in a year but this one this one is staying for staying. a while until <laughs> well, until someone it. buys threads and so someone buys buys threads and calls it thimbles or something random like that and, <laughs> and no they have to change it to uh change it to just a random letter of the alphabet it's gonna be no longer threads it's now w and uh, everybody everybody's gonna w stuff and re w stuff and uh don't you know, don't give me ideas please don't put that out there <laughs> Drop no. me a W in the chat. <laughs> oh my god! I don't. I don't want to have to be dealing with Threads alternatives. I'm already dealing with <laughs> Twitter alternative social media networks. I don't need more drama. As a social media manager, I beg of you. Oh my gosh! I think Threads is safe. Anything, anything in the in the Zuck space tends yeah, to kind of stick. Anywhere. Yeah. We've had the Facebook for twenty freaking years. It seems like and. Uh, uh, Instagram is now for old people. Uh, That's it. I'm <laughs> going back to MySpace. <laughs> Friendster time. Oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. Um, and make sure you check out all the other stuff in the Star Wars Underworld Network that's going on on YouTube and Twitch and other streaming places. Um, Facebook. We stream on Facebook. Watch a lot of this stuff. Uh, we got the Race Side over on the Race Side channel. Ion Cannon, uh, Tractor Beam, and uh, this show is on this channel. And Tales from Beyond the Galaxy is on their own channel so check out all of that fantastic stuff
All right, cool. Uh, before we dive into the episode, I just want to say real quick, I just want to talk about Toronto Comic Con just for a second because you guys oh, had yeah. to listen to me plug it like crazy yeah. for uh, three or four weeks there. And I just wanted to uh, give a big shout out, a big thank you to everybody that came out to the two panels or one or the other one. When I say two, I don't mean only to the people that came to both. I mean, anybody who came to either one, uh, they were a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, I cannot begin to tell you how nervous I was on Friday morning going to the convention center. Um, and I was so nervous. I'm like, I have to get there early so that there's a chance nothing go can go wrong. And I got there so early, they didn't have the programming badges yet. I, I went to go pick up my badge and they're like, here's your media pass. And the other badges will be here in 10 minutes. I was like, you're oh. kidding me. Oh. Um, but uh, it was a lot of fun. We did the panel on Friday with uh, Claudia Gray, who was absolutely wonderful. Uh, she was terrific on the panel, and she was just a lovely person, as as you would expect, as you would hope. She had just flown in the night before, and and uh, came came right down to the panel, and and did and had that conversation with us. And also shout out to uh, to Ash and to Matthew, who were both uh, ter terrific, terrific on the panel. We had a great time, um, and I really appreciate everybody who came out and came out early to see that one because that was. Um, I was talking about the panels with my dad and he said to me, oh, what were you like? What was the big thing you were up against for that one? I was like, oh, the big thing we were up against was arriving at the convention because it was ah. early in the morning. Mm. Um, but it was a lot of fun. We had a great crowd and everybody we had a really fun crowd. Everybody was real engaged. And we had a great time. And then on Sunday, a uh, huge, huge shout out to uh, my fellow panelists for celebrating Star Wars. Uh, Kevin from Toying Around, which is a great YouTube channel. They do a Star Wars podcast called Boba Squadron uh, and they review toys over there. It's terrific, terrific stuff. Uh, Isaac at IZ Cosplay on social media, such a such a nice guy, uh, and uh, Alicia, one of the best Padme cosplayers out there, the Dot Naboo Dot Senator. Uh, all three of them were terrific on the panel. Uh, we filled that room, which was stunning. I was wow, I was yes. I was shocked. Yes. I was I was so excited and, and so shocked that everybody well. came out. And uh, yeah, all three, all like all four, you know. If we did a Star Wars Underworld panel with with us and with Hannah and like and we we did that, I'd go into that expecting the discussion to be great because we do this every week. These were essentially four strangers. Like some of us knew each other through through the panels, but we had never done a show together. We had never done a panel together. And in, there was like instant chemistry between the panel. Nice. It was really amazing to see. And, nice. and wow. An all credit to those three, to Kevin, to Isaac, and to Alicia for for uh, agreeing to this and then being a part of it and bringing their their like un unique personalities and sensibilities and star loves of Star Wars to that. Uh, it was such a fun panel, and uh, you know, as sort of like as just as a person on it, I was having a grand time, and it seemed like everybody in the room was having a grand time. So, uh, thank you to everybody who came out. Thank you to to the panelists again, Claudia. Matthew, Ash, Kevin, Isaac, Alicia, uh, you are all wonderful, and thank you to everybody who came out, and the organizers for taking a chance on us. And uh, I hope, uh, I hope, I hope everybody was happy with it. So uh, that was Toronto Comic Con. Great, great time. I'm, I have recordings of the panels, Ooh. and my plan is to post them. I just have not gotten around to that yet because nice. uh, life threw me a curveball the Tuesday after Toronto Comic Con, and I've been dealing with the repercussions of that ever since then. But we'll get those panels up because they are really good, and I want everybody to see them. So that's it. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Awesome. I, I, I yield my time. All right. Yeah, no, let's talk about. Let's we didn't talk. even have to play you out. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were getting to that point. But I could see Ben was getting ready to cue the orchestra. He was getting ready. To, uh, um, <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the Bad Batch. We're talking season three, episode eight. <laughs> bad terror. That's not no. That's wait, wrong. Wait, ben, you didn't update the. You didn't update. I thought no, you updated oh, the no. show notes, Ben. <laughs> Um, we're talking the season three episode. only thing, the only thing that I missed. Give me a break. <laughs> we're talking season three, episode nine, Harbinger or Harbinger yes. or Harbinger, if you prefer. Uh, oh, or, I think it's Harbinger. the Harbinger. That's the other thing I screwed up on. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know what? Let's just call it the Asajj Ventress episode. There we that's go. What, uh, that's what we're, that's what everybody remembers about this one. And let's, uh, let's discuss it. Let's begin the show. How we always do go around the table, give some initial impressions. Ben Jammin, we're throwing it to you first. What did you think of the Ventress episode? Yeah. So, I mean, it, this is, what can you say about this episode? It is that it, you know, it part of me, like my really only like, criticism or disappointment with this episode is like i would have really have liked to see this episode in a world where i hadn't seen the trailer i hadn't been completely spoiled on the fact that okay you know and and it didn't help 
Jennifer Corbett and Joel Aaron and all the people behind the scenes were really hyping this up on Twitter the, the, on Tuesday. And we're really getting into like, oh, something big's going to happen. The Kiners are tweeting. They're doing their stuff. And, you know, it's just like, OK, something's about to happen. I don't usually stay up for these episodes. But like I said, occasionally I will treat myself. and I'm like, OK, mm -hmm. if I if I don't stay up, I'm going to wake up to spoilers. I feel like it's going to happen tonight. So I stayed up and I was rewarded. And uh, yeah, Ventress walking on screen was not a surprise, but still a just a delight. And I think it feels like it feels like she never left. Like a credit mm -hmm. to Nika Futterman and the animation team, you know, just like animating her and voicing her perfectly. She feels like the same character, just different. And also, you know, just evolved a little bit from where we last saw her and obviously alive. But like, if you haven't read, the funny <laughs> thing is, is that the big thing about this is the, like, oh my God, she's alive. How did she alive? Like, if you only watch Clone Wars, which most people, have only watched most people haven't watched Clone Wars. I was gonna say all, most people most people have, have only seen Clone Wars. They haven't seen any other movie ever, just the Clone Wars. <laughs> right. Exactly. But like the general audience has like only seen Clone Wars. They don't they're not aware of Dark Disciple. You're just like, okay, well I didn't see her. She you know rode off into the sunset and at the end of you know season four five she was in that one episode uh, the it was the wrong Jedi was the last episode mm -hmm. and yeah. That was it. And then now she shows up here like you, you haven't skipped a beat. She's just here. Um, and that's where people are like, oh, they're going to explain it like they don't really have to. They can. And they said they will, but they don't have to in the Bad Batch. Um, yeah, it's just it's a great episode. And, and on top of all that, like great story for Omega. Great story for the Batch. A lot of great action. Some great moments for all the characters and some potentially major revelations, which we'll get into. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely chris what about you what'd you think of this one wow um i think my biggest takeaway was it's so odd that such a major development in the show is happening and what we believe to be the last season and so far into the last season mm -hmm. and if anything it makes me feel like i just saw like a backdoor pilot to something else yeah. and i feel like this confirms to me that because I've had this kind of theory. I can't remember if I've said it where I said it, if I've said it in the show or not. So I'll say it again. I apologize for repeating myself. But um, I feel like there's kind of like a really strong lead character for for each each generation, mm. uh, especially like female lead characters. I think mm -hmm. if you there's kind of males and females, but for females, like, you know, you got Leia, who's like a Gen yeah. X, you know, and then. Uh, the for millennials you have Padme Amidala, mm -hmm. uh, and then for Gen Z that was very Ahsoka. Uh, that was Ahsoka. Um, you know, for a lot of people, millennials is a kind of a big generation, kind of somewhere between. You don't know which one you really fit into. It's kind of Ahsoka as well. Um, and then for for the the generation that now is kind of too young to podcast, who we aren't really speaking <laughs> with on the internet. Uh, but are there and watching this show in great numbers, Jen? <laughs> Jen, generations <laughs> that's too young to podcast. They yeah, they, 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 they haven't gotten I'll, enough allowance I'll money to buy. Think. <laughs> yes, exactly. Buy their microphone. <laughs> This is the the Gen, yeah, Gen Gen Alpha is what I'm referring to, and for for them, I think I think they want Omega to be that character. I don't think mm. I don't think this character. I don't think it's like Kazuda who just appeared and disappeared. Yeah, sadly, um, and we have tons of business cards left with his yes. name on it. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah. that will those will endure forever and be found uh, when when couches are moved. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I think I feel like I'm, they're setting Omega up for for more for for more than just, you know, it being a rap on Omega after after this season with this huge, you know, a tease of potential force powers going on and potentially being like trained by a size ventress what like that came yeah. out of nowhere we, again we thought she was dead like who who knew that that jennifer corbett was like texting you know uh <laughs> texting what was it um was it claudia gray who wrote that or is that christy golden 
Uh, oh, Chris Golden, who wrote yeah, thank you. Uh, Dark Golden. Disciple, yeah. Yeah, we were yeah. just talking about Claudia. Claudia. Great. <laughs> um, yeah. So Christy Golden, she's like texting Christy Golden like, hey, I have an idea for a show um, <laughs> and it's going to involve a size Venturous, but I want to really like, I want people to see, I, I see it coming. So can you kind of make it seem like she she died <laughs> in, in your interpretation of Clone Wars? Um, or maybe it goes even further back to like the original, you know, mm -hmm. Clone Wars writers and whoever wrote those yeah. episodes that you know katie lucas is somewhere going. yeah she's texting that's right <laughs> katie lucas that's right because katie lucas is very much the person who wrote a lot of a size ventress now that you you mentioned it i forgot mm -hmm. about that um and so yeah it's so interesting so yeah really fascinating episode and just i the implications I, to me just the, the episode itself is like yeah it's just like a procedural episode there's monster stuff there's you know the conflict stuff like it's a very procedural episode mm -hmm. but the the, the the main part of the story and the revelation that happens is huge. And that's what's so interesting to me. And that's why I thought the episode was fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Like it wasn't the like biggest, grandest episode of the series. If anything, I think you could probably argue, you know, two weeks ago with the, uh, the Rex episodes, those were like big grand episodes yeah. with, implications for all the characters yeah. and, and for you know what's going to happen pro probably in the finale um but this episode yeah it felt like it was it was tapping into something bigger and there's an added wrinkle now i think to the final stretch of episodes because of what ventress is saying to omega when they're on the boat and specifically to hunter and, and crosshair at the end about you know if omega has these abilities she'll need to be trained and she'll need to be trained away from you guys it's it's in a way it's it's kind of bears some similarities to the um you know short-lived plot line on the mandalorian of grogu uh you know leaving din uh to go train with luke um and there's there's a lot in this episode that feels similar to other star wars stuff and we'll, we'll get into it uh while also feeling really unique and fresh in its own way but it, it adds these sort of new set of stakes to the to the finale because we were all already suspicious about Omega's M count through what we learned in the premiere. And then through this episode, you really you've had a character come in and strongly, strongly suggest that that does mean she is force sensitive or has the ability to be a, a force user in the traditional pre Ahsoka series sense. Um, and so now what does that mean for this last batch of episodes? Where is Omega going to wind up at the end of the storyline? Uh, is she going to stay with these clones or is there someone out there to train her? Is that per person Ventress? Is that somebody else? You know, she had seemed to have a connection with Gunji, um, in, season two so maybe there's something there that could could be uh, uh tapped into or dare i say the a word ahsoka mm -hmm. we, we keep thinking we though there's always it always in animation it always comes back to ahsoka and there's always things that that point in the direction of ahsoka rex's involvement in the show trace and rafa if you go back to season one like there's always been these like breadcrumbs that it feels like it's building to ahsoka and in a sense again in that like macro big picture sense of star wars or like we were talking about with characters dying and coming back like i i don't think everything should lead to ahsoka <laughs> the character i think like uh, there can be other reveals and other characters out there but damn it makes sense for this story it makes sense for this story um so or or is there even somebody else and then that opens up a whole other string of questions about um what hat why isn't if ahsoka could be a jedi or a force force user force sensitive where is she during the original trilogy well they gave us a pretty good answer for where the hell ezra was uh with the ahsoka series but you know there's only so many times you can play the peridia card before it, it gets repetitive and i think you can play it once uh and they have right. so i uh I think there's a, uh, I think that, that you know, it, it, it just, it adds a new wrinkle to this and it makes us go into those finales thinking about what, what could be next for Ahsoka. Can she be, if not a Jedi, then some sort of new version of a, of a force sensitive. And I, I'm, I'm really intrigued. I'm really fascinated by where that will, uh, will lead us. 
Um, but let's start. Let's start. We'll of course start by talking about Asajj Ventress. Uh, Chris, I'm going to throw throw to you. I mean, what what was your um, what was your what what did you think of of how they handled the return of Ventress in in Bad Batch or the debut of Ventress? I, I guess you could say it's so interesting seeing the evolution of her character being Jedi like in some ways. Mm. Being being like, you know, a gray force user and like, you know, the moments where she's like communicating with like the sea creatures, it's like crazy to see that because like you only see Jedi do things like that. Yeah. It's like that communication with nature is very light side thing and not or at least a thing with balance, not with with dark side. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's interesting to see how and like she has like, you know, a a gold lightsaber. Yeah. You know. Um, and so it's like, she's kind of, it's like, she's been reborn in, in, mm. in a way, um, which, which is so interesting and gone the opposite way that, that many go. She's, she's fallen to the light. Like, like Kylo Ren was so worried about in the, in the sequels. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, look at that, you know, we have a photo on screen of her, you know, closing her eyes and reaching out to the, to nature. Like, um, it's just, that's such a, jedi yeah. if, if if you showed this scene to somebody this this still to somebody who never um watched clone wars didn't know who asajj ventress was it just said this is a star wars character this is what they're doing they'd go oh that's a jedi yeah that's a jedi. yeah 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 you can you can only just barely see the remnants of the like horror like <laughs> makeup that she <laughs> that that she has um but yeah so I, I i thought that was fascinating i thought it was cool to see the reverse of what we often see so i i thought that was handled very well i i think that you know her relationship with the character i mean we, we already saw it with crosshair we saw when crosshair came back the other members of the bad batch were very skeptical but omega's like hey let's you know we, we got to give him a chance and uh, that of course was the dynamic again you know, with with Asajj Ventress, um, which was which is you know fascinating, but makes perfect sense. Like you know, they remember her, the Bad Batch remember her as as a killer, mm -hmm. um, as as that person who uh, uh, gutted somebody and kissed them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, that's 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 what she's known for, and not many people have heard the story of what happened to her. You know, after after she left the the Sith. Uh, and, and the separatists. So, um, yeah, yeah, really great. I think I think the, the characterization and the the, the dialogue and the, the way that the, the characters were reacting to each other, I think that 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 all made a lot of sense. And yeah, it was great. Yeah, Ventress in, in this episode, she seems like she's a character that really has her back up. Like she's she's like it in she's she's constantly on guard for. Um, people who remember her from her past mm -hmm. and there's that scene when you know she's getting omega to stand there on the rock with the yogan fruit on her head uh which by the way i'm for a brief moment considered starting this show by going and getting an apple and putting it on my head and standing here and just balancing it then i didn't um but uh <laughs> she's like the circus performer yeah yeah <laughs> I, you know, she's doing she's doing that and she's like but like you can tell she's listening to the conversation that Crosshair and Wrecker and and te and yep. uh, Attack uh, yep. uh, Hunter are having, and she's immediately aware. Oh, they know, they know now, and then and we and that's why she sends Omega away. And the next thing you know, you have have the fight. But so this is but everything else though that she does, if you didn't know, if aside from that scene, if you didn't know, you'd say this is kind of a curmudgeonly Jedi character. You know, not unlike Luke in Last Jedi. And mm -hmm. oh boy, there's some Last Jedi in this episode. Oh, oh man. The visuals. Yeah. I, I, you know, mm. I, I don't have who directed this episode in front of me, but uh, if you said it was Ryan Johnson, I wouldn't be so surprised. Like that, all those scenes in the cave, you, you couldn't tell, you could tell me those were on, on Acto, and I'd absolutely believe it. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you sh everything about her seems to be this is a character that has, yeah, moved towards the light where she's not a jedi she's not a she's not a dark disciple either at this point either and you know i'm not a huge fan of the concept of a gray jedi in the way that people talk about it where you know oh it's a jedi but they can use force lightning i'm like eh, i don't really know <laughs> that know that that works but the idea of someone who is a bit more like the bendu in their in their approach to things where they're not 
bound by a specific code of light or darkness. They're just sort of going with what the moment calls for, with what the force calls them to is interesting. And this, and I feel like Ventress exists in that space. And it's a, it's not a space we've seen a ton of force user characters in. Usually they're pretty entrenched as either light or dark or somebody who is moving in a very specific direction on that spectrum between light and dark. Whereas Ventress seems like somebody who's rather content in the middle. She's, she will never be a Jedi, but she'll never be a Sith either. And, and her, so she, her choices aren't driven by any sense of what would the great Jedi masters do or what would the great Sith Lords do. Yeah, it's it, it it's interesting because especially this season with Crosshair, we've talked a heck of a lot about redemption mm -hmm. and how Star Wars, especially kind of criticizing Star Wars for like, you know, you can like you don't have to kill a character off after they're redeemed. You can let them live sometimes. And Ventress up until recently was one of those characters that like got redemption, died. And mm -hmm. in this classic Star Wars thing. Now we are seeing this version of Ventress really is a character that has gone through redemption that has come out the other side. And, and she's not a Jedi. She's not claiming to be a Jedi, but she's definitely not a Sith. She's definitely not someone who has, I mean, like how many chances does she have to like kill everyone in this episode? And she doesn't <laughs> like, she's yeah. clearly like holding back and like, like kind of casual. She's like, I wasn't planning on killing you, but you're making it very tempting, but she mm. isn't. She's, for all intents and purposes, a good person now. She definitely wasn't when we first met her in the Clone Wars. And I like the idea of just like exploring this other side of redemption of just like when you come out the other side after doing all those terrible things we've talked about. What if Anakin survived? What if Ben Solo survived? How how would the how would the rebellion and the resistance react if you show up and Ben Solo's there, hey, hi, I'm Kylo Ren. You know, like this, <laughs> it wouldn't go over well. It would go over about like it went in this episode where they're ready to kill her if they have to, to defend Omega and themselves. And it takes a big brawl where, you know, she comes within inches of killing them to teach them that this is not the way it has to go. And I like that. I like this exploration. I'm just like, this is what redemption is. This is what she's, ultimately paying for her past mistakes unfortunately but she has to ultimately prove her worth and prove who she actually is um yeah and, and it's just it's it's really great i think and it, it's it interesting now we have this era where there is no jedi but now we have characters that don't really want to be referred to as jedi ahsoka mm. a jedi but doesn't really want to be associated with that ventress also same thing even ben kenobi is like i was once a jedi knight the same as your father like they're all like avoiding that term and we're in this era where you know what is what does it mean to be a jedi and omega's really enthused about that but she's also not a jedi not yet anyway not yet it's yeah it, with ventress you know something i as we're talking about this character and and you know her trajectory and and you know she seems to be it seems to have sort of the best of intentions at least at this point but she's still out to to i don't know if she's out to fight the empire but she knows the empire is sort of the ultimate enemy there's that sequence when she's talking to the to the bad batch and she says you know we were all forged by this war and we all lost the empire is worse than than anything and you know, but and, and so and she's still like skulking around. She's being really secretive. She's still using a lot of what she learned from Dooku and in, in her time as a dark disciple. Um, that it made me think. It made me think of Luthen Rael's line from Andor. You know, I'm condemned to use the tools of my enemy to defeat them. I, I almost feel like she's like she fits in perhaps in that Luthen Sagarera sort of fold of. You know, she's she's on the right side. You know, she's fighting the Empire. She's against the Empire. But her tactics are the sort of thing that would make Mon Mothma and Bail Organa queasy. Um, and, you know, there's there's absolutely a place for, for that in, in the storytelling. And I think, you know, that putting her with a character like Omega or with the Bad Batch, it, it makes for an interesting it opens up some interesting opportunities. I, I think, um, I don't know if, if Omega is going to be there 
long term. Uh, long term with Ventress, I don't think we're quite setting that up, but there's something there's something here. There's something there's something going on, and and I I I. I I'm I'm hesitant to, to make any sort of declarative statements based on those comments that Jen Corbett and Brad Rao have made uh, in the last few weeks about what the future holds for Ventress, because a lot of people are assuming they've like soft confirmed a show with some of their <laughs> some of their comments about uh, you know future storytelling, and I don't know if that's necessarily true. I'm not saying it isn't. I'd love for it to be true, um, but it has been, but. I guess what I'm getting is I, I, I think they, I don't know. I forgot what I'm getting at. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I lost I my mean, train you, of thought. I mean, you have to, you have to like, like, come on, you have to, you know, it, you can't ignore the fact that like the bad batch started as a backdoor pilot and in, yeah. you know, in, in the middle of, you know, the last season of Clone Wars. Now we're in the last season of Bad Batch. People are a little more keen to this idea and maybe looking at it going, what are they going to do? What's going to be the ne next big Star Wars animated show? And, like, I don't know. Like, I'm assuming Ventures is going to come back. Maybe she's not. Maybe this is her only episode, and, you know, we will just pick back up with her at some point later. Yeah, Tales, Tales of the Jedi. Tales of the Jedi. It's got to be gotta be the next season it's gotta be given i feel three episodes three episodes of ventress one where she is actually a jedi two something dark disciple -y, and three something leading into this one two three there you go there's your three there's your three ventress episodes there you go dave write it dave come on dave um you know i i guess um yeah i i it, it, this is i guess all i'm getting at is is could you could could there be sort of a, a Jedi fighting the Empire who or a Jedi like character fighting the Empire who isn't isn't Ezra, isn't isn't Obi-Wan mm. Kenobi, isn't Luke Skywalker, isn't Ahsoka, isn't somebody who is, you know, truly walking in the in the the path of the light. Or could you have someone who does utilize this skill set that uh, Ventress has to, you know, become a thorn in the side of the empire in a real meaningful and, and uh, you know, annoying way. If you're a grand Moff Tarkin. I mean, that's like Maul in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, Maul though, Maul wants to be like king of the underworld. Yeah. He's got different, he's got different yeah, uh, intentions. I, I feel, yeah, I feel like Maul is really ambitious. And from the moment we yeah. meet him in rebels, he's really ambitious. I don't know what Ventress wants. That's yeah. what's really interesting about this is, is Good point. we don't know. We see her through this episode entirely in the context of what she can show the Bad Batch, what they can learn from her. We never get a sense of what she's actually after. She knows about M counts. She knows about that the Empire is after people with, with high midichlorian counts, which, by the way, I love that they actually said midichlorian for a change <laughs> instead of just going with M count. Um but what what does she want? What does Ventress actually want? Where is she actually going with this? It'll be fascinating to to see. Yeah. You you have to you have to consider like I don't know put, if you put all these characters on some type of like selflessness to selfishness like spectrum. Mm -hmm. Like you have like Maul's all the way over on the selfish side. He's all about himself, and you have like people like you know Ezra who are very selfless. Ventress is kind of in the middle. Ventress is mm -hmm. kind of towards the middle in regards to like she's, you know, she when she says she's on her own side, I think she's being a little coy. I also think mm -hmm. she's maybe been a little truthful there too. But ultimately, she is a better person than she was. But I think she's still on the journey to being more selfless, more like a Jedi. Whether she will call herself a Jedi at the end of this, who knows? But um, you know, she's definitely more. She's more of a threat to the empire because i think maul's just like screw it i'm gonna go have my i'm gonna be crimson dawn in the shadows and you know you do my own thing mm. how how do we feel about how they they handled the the, the dark disciple of it all the the part uh the the way they sort of hand waved away ventress's death Hmm. Better than better than somehow Palpatine returned. I'll give it, give him that. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I but mean, it's a low bar. It's tough because I feel I feel like they're starting to get back into 
the old ways of doing things, um, mm. which is there is multiple tiers of canon. Um, mm. Cause that, that was the whole point. The whole point I feel like of the reset that happened shortly after Disney took over, I think, you know, um, you know, uh, like, was it Kenobi and Plagueis were some of the last books in the old no, canon? Those... Tar Tarkin. Yeah. They were some of the last ones in the old canon. Yeah. Yeah. The old canon. Yeah. yeah. So, so it went with those, those ended and then it started, I think with like a new dawn and yeah. like, and, and Tarkin and, and things like oh, that. Like Tarkin yeah. was in a new canon. Okay. Yeah. So that was the shift when it happened. That was a cutoff point. Um, and I feel like the whole point of that was so that they could say like, okay, we're now going to write everything with the intention of it fitting together mm. and you read the new books coming out the new comic books you watch the new shows you see the new movies you play the new video games whatever it is it's all in the same universe it's all canon it's all gonna fit together like i feel like that was the point in addition to giving a clean slate to, to telling some stories again and making room for film and tv projects and errors that have already been written out so um i feel like they're kind of slowly under what's word undermining the purpose of that reset by throwing out books and comic books and then, you know, telling stories on screen that, you know, don't exactly fit with what the, those might've been trying to tell. Mm. And this is kind of one of the major examples of that. So it just, it's one of those things that makes me hesitant to really be super attached to what's going on in the paper canon which is unfortunate because I'm sure there's lots of good stuff as far as writing is concerned in the paper canon. I mean, look at Claudia Gray and many others. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like you still almost have to take it all still with a grain of salt, like what you did with the expanded universe prior to, to Disney, knowing like these stories exist as a legend within mm -hmm. the universe separately. And it's 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 an all alternate infinities. Mm -hmm. What if vision? <laughs> <laughs> Throw all the it terms in there. Like, ben, ben, what do you very think? Very least, at, at the very least, I feel like people, Filoni specifically, and people like him, at in the story group or or abroad, have this interpretation of well, at the very least, there is maybe not tiers of canon. Like all this stuff happens. But there's different versions of it that happened. There's the mm. there's a there's a there's a version of you know of Kanan's you know le you know losing his master and and going on the run from Order sixty six in the TV and in animation. And there's also one in the comic books, and they don't exactly line up. And then there's the the Ahsoka novel, the events of that, and then there's what happens to Tales of the Jedi, and it kind of lines up, but it kind of doesn't. I think, I mean, I can I can respect the idea of, well, we're ultimately going to do what's best for this specific story. It's not real. <laughs> this stuff's <laughs> not real. We can be a little, you know, fast and loose with canon, quote unquote canon. Sometimes things don't have to perfectly line up. If it's a lightsaber blade that's different or something like that, it's okay. But you, like you're bringing up down like, like they're they're the ones that came up and said every everything is canon now nothing is going to contradict anything and they're the ones who ultimately set themselves up for this and so like you kind of i don't i don't feel sorry for them when people call them out on this because i'm like you set this up this is your idea like you could have easily said like only the movies and the TV shows are canon. And that's it. And let the books do whatever they want. No, they 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 toyed with this and they're and they're continuing in this point. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel like it is it's complicated. I'm I'm open to new ideas, but also, you know, it does it is concerning sometimes. You just be like, okay, what are you doing? Are you gonna actually keep this going are you gonna contradict things are you gonna you know what's what's going on with ventress is this gonna be a trend a lot of questions so here, here's the thing here's the thing i i understand the point of view that you guys are are, are bringing to the table here as, especially if you're talking about a different situation 
with this one, these are the same people that are bringing that that killed the character off that are bringing the character back. Um, yes, technically, Christy Golden wrote the story. Yes, technically, Jen Corbett, Brad Rao, Matt Michnovitz, they made the decision to bring back the character. But there's one there's one guy who's overarching all of this, who's overseeing all of this. And that's Dave Filoni. And Dark Disciple is based on scripts that were written uh, under Dave's uh, supervision for Clone Wars. And if you read all those interviews with them, uh, Dave is the one who suggested bringing this character back, which does perhaps suggest that, you know, Tales of the Jedi, something else is going to uh, you know cover adventure stories in the future. So he's the guy who said this character is dead. And then he's the guy who said this character is alive, which <laughs> sounds a lot like something that happened about 10, 12 years ago with mm. Darth Maul. Mm. Where the guy mm. who said, no, no, this character is dead, said, no, actually, this character is alive. And that was George. And Dave is George's Padawan. So to me, this is just this is just the guy who told the story going, I, actually, I, I had an idea for more. And I want to do more. So we're going to bring this character back. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna come up with a reason. I'm gonna hand wave it away, much in the in the way that they did with Maul. You know, my hatred sustained me. You know, and that, that kept him alive. Um, you know, honest and honestly, like I don't I don't have a problem per se with Palpatine coming back. And people are like, oh, what was Poe supposed to say with the whole somehow Palpatine return thing? I'm like something less stupid because that's such a stupid line. But um, like the idea of of bringing characters back. I don't think it's a bad one. I think it can work. I think it works here. Um, and so I'm I'm not sold on on this being some grand contradiction of canon. I'm not particularly worried about any grand contradictions of canon because, as you pointed out, Chris, the stories are good. Stories that are written are good, and I enjoy them. I will enjoy. I will continue to enjoy them. So. Um, I I uh, I'm not I I don't see this as any sort of problem. I liked honestly. I really liked the line. I I have a few lives left. I like I like that. I thought that was a cute little wink at uh, everybody who was concerned about Dark Disciple or who had read Dark Disciple. Um, I I liked I liked how they handled this. Honestly, I really really did. And you know these these things are are going to are going to happen. It's an evolving universe, and people come up with new ideas all the time. And I would hate to miss out on a good idea because it's it would contradict canon. I would hate to miss out on on a good idea and a good story. And so I think we just have to learn to accept it. As Ben said, none of this is real. As Harrison Ford would say it's fake and in space. <laughs> so let's let's just roll with it. Like, like let's just roll with it and and let's let the storytellers figure out the red string approach of how they're going to bring all these characters back uh, and make it, make it work. Um, do I wish death would mean something in star Wars? Yes. Do I think they bring back characters too often? Yes. Am I worried about contradicting Canon? No, that's something that just isn't a, a concern to me. I'm more interested in how they do it. If you're going to, if you're going to undo something or quasi undo it, where you say, no, no, the other thing still counts but we're just going to do something that's after it that undoes it quote unquote um is that's uh that's the, I want to see how you do it more than I, I care about you you doing it also I mean, dump truck in the chat is just cruel <laughs> leaf second round exit is canon how oh, dare you geez. how dare you we're going all the way this year let me tell you <laughs> get past Boston and Florida. Oh. Boston. Yeah, I don't know about Boston. I don't know about that. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, okay, here's the thing. I, I think when I talk about the issues with contradictions, like it's not like that it's a problem for contradiction's sake. It's not like the fact that it's a contradiction is the issue. I think that mm. the issue is does it does it take away from the impact of the story to know that it actually ended a different way than what you're watching, like, mm. or, or, or reading. Well, like, 
let, let me that's... ask you. Let, let me ask you this: Does Return of the Jedi feel worse because Pal somehow Palpatine returned in Rise of Skywalker? I think it creates cognitive dissonance. Mm. It creates a situation where you have to slightly double think, slightly suspend your disbelief in the situation. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel quite right to me that 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 was done. I think the emotional artistic beats of it were great. I think if you view it as two distinct pieces of art, you can say, well, this is an alternate version of that, just like, you know, red shirt, blue shirt, or whatever the heck. But if you view it as the same cohesive thing, if it's, you know, two, two, two trilogies together, or ultimately three trilogies together, or even more, the tapestry of the entire Star Wars canon, it, it doesn't. It, it, it is rough. It's a bit. It's a bit rough because so, you have that emotional, you know, that big moment where he dies, and you know, yeah, and, everybody knows. And do, do you feel the same way with Darth Maul in Phantom Menace when he gets cut in half? You're like, ah, oh, well, it doesn't actually mean anything for Obi Wan because he's going to come back in Clone Wars in ten years. I, I, I think with Darth Maul. I think what they should have done is they should have told the exact same story, but had Savage Press be the only brother the entire mm. time. I mm. think the story was good and interesting, but I do think they could have, it didn't have to be Maul. It, they mm. could have done all that without Maul. And I understand maybe the significance would have changed of the last moment with him because of between him and Obi Wan, that's not going to be that same, you know, connection as. Uh, Savage and Obi Wan, so I, I I grant it will probably take away that last episode that he was in, but other than that, you know, you could have done that story without it being Maul. I think it was unnecessary for it to be a a returning character. It could have been a new character. Okay. So that was I, yeah. I mean, I I've always held the 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 belief that uh, Savage or Presh got shafted, and in in Clone Wars, like he could have been an amazing character, but, and he was an amazing character at first in very interesting, but like once Maul showed up, he was like second fiddle, like literally like Maul shows up and beats him and goes like, no, you're my apprentice. Now you're, I'm the main character now. Okay. And like, we're, we're getting into rehashing things from 2000 and uh, but, okay. I haven't point, talked about point. this stuff in 10 years. <laughs> Give me a break. The point is if you're going to kill a character, because again, a lot of this is situations where People kill off characters and bring back the same characters they specifically chose to yeah. kill off, like you mm -hmm. mentioned. If you're going to kill a character, really think: do would it be interesting to see this character in another era? Like, really, really think about it because it, the fact that it's been done and it's been a little bit rough, you know, I think you know, I think it should put some pause into anyone that actually wants to kill a character. And I think they have that pause with with, with Ahsoka at this point. Like everybody, you know, knows like, okay, we can't. We can't kill Ahsoka at any point because it's like we always are going to need her. She's interesting in every era of of Star Wars. She'll just keep coming back and back and back just and put back. Her behind, put her behind a pane of glass that says "break if needed" or something. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and so, like, so I, I think I think you know there's missteps, and I think they need to be learned from. So basically, what I'm I'm saying is. Um, Hey, it is what it is. I'm not going to be mad at things that have happened. I'm not going to be mad that Ventress, you know, is back. I'm not going to be mad that Maul or Palpatine is back. I'm going to still enjoy those things. But in the future, I really, really hope that people consider when they're killing off characters that they consider two things. One thing is, you know, should I even kill this character off? Because will I, will this character be interesting 5, 10, 15 years down the road? And two, if there's any doubt about it, kill them off in an ambiguous way, like with tech, <laughs> so that they could potentially return, and you there's still a little bit of a, a little bit more of an, a, a concept that they might gotta, they might come back. I gotta be honest, I think tech is the least ambiguous death of all of them. Emotionally, but, yes. Yeah, I, right. I mean, not 
to I mean, tech actually, you know what? Tech. To be fair, all three of uh, Palpatine, <laughs> Maul, and Tech all died by falling down a thing. So, <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes. Um, um, I think, but, well, uh, okay. So here's the thing. I, I will say this. I will say this. Um, Maul, to me, if we're going to rank it, Maul makes the most sense for me. Because he was cut in half, but we didn't really see where he fell. And the thing didn't really explode, explode. You know, pa Palpatine, like, went down a shaft. And even if he had survived down there, the entire space station blew up right after Around that. him, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, there's really, it's like, what is he going to do? Like, survive in the vacuum of space? Like, you know, I understand, like, you know, transferring essence to clones. And, like, they're trying all their best to make it sense, to make it make sense with fantasy and science fiction. And, okay, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with that. That's cool. I'm glad that they're doing that and putting in the effort. Um, dump truck, we all... If you've been listening to the show long enough, you know that I don't think Mace died. Ultimately, ultimately, dot dot dot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like ultimately, it is going to is this it's going to be a battle between creators. It's never going to end. You know, it's ultimately it's like one creator goes like, I want to kill this character off because it's important for this story, and then another creator comes down the pipe and just like says, okay, that it's the same thing with franchises now. Franchises now never die nothing ever goes away because no matter how many creators come along and go like this is the ending we're not going to get any more movies out of this oh there's going to be you know like you know there's going to be the 1500th fast and furious movie like it's, it's never going to end like there's always going to be someone else that's going to come along and go but wait there's more like it's never going to end and in regards to ventress really Ultimately, I always I'm just going to judge these things by how I think they're handled. And, you know, if they retcon it and they go full blown, this character definitely died. They got their head chopped off and now they're back. I'm still going to judge it case by case basis of just like with Maul. Like, yeah, Maul was ambiguous, but also not. He was cut in half. I think George intended him to be die, but then he changed his mind. I like what they did with Maul, so I'm OK with it. Django lives. Django lives. <laughs> <laughs> um I'll, uh, here, here's how i'll end this conversation canon schmanon tell good stories let's move on uh let's talk about omega um because this really as much as this is the ventress episode this is an omega episode um what we get sort of a a quasi kind of sort of probably conf confirmation that uh, she is force sensitive in a way. What what did we think, Ben? I'll go. We'll go to you on this. What what did we think of the way of, of how she approached these sort of force tests that Ventress gave her? Yeah. So I mean, obviously, it's a again a different way of doing Jedi training, a Jedi test. We've seen characters get tested before this whole idea of just like, you're, you're, you may be force sensitive. Let's, let's see how good you are. And from my thing, just watching the episode for the first time, I was just like, okay, it's not just what's happening on screen. It's what is the creators trying to tell me with this? What are they, what are they, what's the, not just the emotion, but the logic that you're trying to convey of like, is Omega force sensitive? Is she not? What am I supposed to believe? And they, I mean, right out of the gate, the first five minutes of the episode, we have Omega saying, am I a Jedi? Like she <laughs> straight up, like they're, they're saying everything out loud. So you're meant to ask these questions, but then you get to the end of the episode and it's just like, is this just like, well, is she or isn't she? And it's, and it's kind of ambiguous. It's kind of interesting, but I did like, how Ventress does throw this out there. And I really, I could go either way because I think you could definitely say like how special Omega is, her abilities as a soldier, as someone she's picked up all these things for her brothers. Of course, she's talented. She's very capable. You could definitely translate that into force sensitivity, but I think it also, it, this episode works either way. I think you could definitely, I think I would like not saying that's the case here, but I would like an, a, a character for once to have the question asked and then the answer be, no, you're not. You're not force sensitive. You're never going to be <laughs> okay. a Jedi. You I, suck. I, 
I I get where you're coming from, Ben, but that's like that's not a story. <laughs> what are we talking? Oh, you're I uh, I thought I might be, be a Jedi. But I'm actually not, so I'm just gonna go back to my uncle's farm and just live out my days. But I know, but no, it, it, <laughs> see, it doesn't like I get that. I get like I, know, I, I'm just, I get. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. No, I no, know no, where you're coming. I get it. I get it. But like you have like you have the question asked, and I I think we're heading that direction. But I would like a good like an uplifting one of just like. No, you're not going to be a Jedi, but that's okay. <laughs> not everyone gets to be, grow up and be a Jedi. Not everyone gets to grow up and be in the NFL. You could just play football on your own and you're fine. Like you can, you're not going to be the best at it. And I love, I, that's why I love Ahsoka. Like Sabine is like, you're literally the worst Jedi ever. There's no way you can become it. She defies the odds. She still becomes a Jedi. She's not the best Jedi, but she's a Jedi. Mm -hmm. And Omega has a purpose in the galaxy. It doesn't have to be that she grows up to wield a lightsaber or wield the force. It could mean that she's just going to be a bit special, more special than people around her. And she may have be able to use the force in ways that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. Chris, what do you think? No, no forced baiting, no force baiting. It's not allowed. <laughs> it's, it's, no, no, it's like you can't you can't make people think something and then and then not do it. And I don't think that's an appropriate use of subversion in an artistic avant garde way. Um, like, yeah, you know, and, and also the the fan base is burnt because Finn <laughs> like <laughs> um, so that's the other thing, too, is like, you know, there, there's already an issue here so um yeah that they, they, they have to be leading towards this they're doing a good job of making us kind of wonder like is she isn't she where there's still a possibility maybe maybe she isn't so keeps us watching keeps us interested we're still gonna be like have this emotional moment when she finally figures it out and moves something you know a little pebble across the <laughs> rock or or something um uh so yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to happen. There's no way it's not going to happen. I think that yeah. just makes no sense. For you. Yeah, I, I, could, I, can, I could see a version of this episode that ends with Ventra saying, no, I don't think you're force sensitive, but there's something else going on here where the Empire needs you for something and it has something to do with, you know, transferring, being the, your blood being right to transfer M count cells or something. Like, I could see something like that. But the fact that, you know, Wrecker takes takes Omega away to get some chow and Crosshair goes, you're lying. <laughs> and then there's that whole other exchange. And like I was talking about earlier, there's, they're adding a new wrinkle to these final batch of episodes of Hunter and Crosshair and Wrecker and to a lesser extent, Echo, I think Echo's like, yeah, kid, kids grow up. <laughs> That's what happens. Uh, whereas the other three are like, no, she must stay our perfect little girl forever. Um, I, I think, I, I think um, they're adding that wrinkle of they have to get used to the idea that they can't protect her from everything and that, you know, there's going to come a time when she's got to learn to fend for herself and there's going to be stuff in this galaxy that they can't teach her. And that may well be how to be a Jedi or how to use the force, how to wield the force in a, in a, in a way that, you know, brings light to the galaxy that brings light to internally for her. Like, uh, you know, th th things like that. Like, I, I feel like this is, this is all building to something. I like that it was kind of, you know, she she was struggling. She didn't pass all the tests right away. It wasn't totally clear. And I like that Ventress like implies that it's because, you know, the clones haven't, you know, she she's learned to live a certain way. And because she's learned to live that way with the Bad Batch as a soldier, as, you know, someone who, who thinks about, you know, war in, in the way that the Bad Batch does, she ha she's not really open to the force just yet. There are there are things, there are places where she is. She gets the the white flower from the weeping willow. There is a moment when she does seem to, you know, actually get the balancing act thing with the with the apple on her head. Um, but you know, she's she's not ready for that. And and then you know, Yoda says to Luke, you know, you must unlearn what you have learned. And I think that's a big part of of uh of training to be a Jedi. And and it and it does you know, give reason to why the Jedi want to start training kids so very young, younger than Omega, uh, to be Jedi, so that all they ever know 
is how to be a Jedi. But uh, for anybody who's coming at this late, they have to unlearn all the stuff that they've learned because they have they they, they weren't taught to think about the galaxy in this way, and um, uh, you know that that leaves that leaves them in a place where they they aren't open to the Force, and the and the first thing you have to do is open yourself up to, up to the Force, and that's like that's basically the the plot of the first season of Ahsoka is all about Sabine trying to get to that point, um, whether or not that was the best most effective storytelling to of showing that character on that journey and you know we can debate that but that, that's ultimately what the the point of, of that is yeah let's uh let's let's talk a little bit about uh you know hunter and, and wrecker and crosshair i do love the i love that that you know crosshair is kind of you know getting himself back uh back ingratiated in with everybody um but this we do really see Ben. We'll we'll I'll go to you on this. Like they we do really see them as the like overprotective uncles, overprotective uh, dads of of Omega. How do how do you think that's? Uh, how do you th- what do you what do you think of of? How do I want to phrase this question? How how what what do you think of of what that means for these characters going forward as we we head into these sort of final episodes? What are what are they gonna how are they gonna get over this? How are they gonna let her? How are they gonna make sure they aren't clipping her wings? I guess is what I'm getting at. I mean, clearly we're heading towards a a moment that's going to wreck me emotionally where <laughs> they say goodbye to Omega. Um, it's just happening. Just get, no. look, just start preparing yourselves emotionally because oh, it's coming. Man. They said it in this episode. It's going to happen, okay? I'm sorry. I'm going to cry and cry and cry. <laughs> it's going to be Grogu leaving Mando all over again. Um, just hope they don't undo it so quickly this time. Uh, anyway, um... Yeah, I mean, obviously they've grown attached. I think even Crosshair's like attachment to her, like he he's the one that's like not happening. Like he's mm-hmm. he's like saying like, no, nah, she's not like that. That's my little girl right there. You're not, you know, this is not happening. Um, and obviously they have every reason to distrust her. Mm-hmm. If, if we as an audience. If you've never seen her before, if you haven't lived with this character for as many years as we have, I think you have every reason to distrust her too. Um, she's a character with not a not a red lightsaber, but not a blue lightsaber, a green lightsaber, a yellow lightsaber showing up. Mm-hmm. And you know, what does that mean? And she's not dressed like a Jedi, she's not acting like a Jedi, she has the force, and she, you know, tried to kill everyone seemingly. So, like obviously, these characters have a lot to go through but that that thought has not only been planted in ours mind but planted in, in theirs mind it was like this they're they're not destined to be together omega's path may lay on a different one from theirs and mm-hmm. what how does that make them feel and how are they going to deal with it um but you know ultimately i think maybe there's a point like as much as i will rag on the Bad Batch again for leaving Echo out of the equation because he's supposed to be part of the Bad Batch, but he isn't in this show for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna stop myself. He left um, the show. He basically left the show last season. But he's still back. Ugh, I'm not even having a discussion right now. He left. Um, he left they made, they made a whole thing about it. What are you talking about? They made a whole thing about it. There's a whole episode where Omega well, yeah, he's back. Talk, they, there's a whole episode where the characters talk through their feelings about how this guy left them. What are you talking about? He's not He's not a main character anymore. <laughs> He could come back he's though. Gonna okay, be, he's gonna be a main character on the Rex and Echo and Cody and Wolf and Gregor show. <laughs> That's coming this fall. Need I remind you, like what two seasons ago, like in real time, like it was a whole big deal that oh, Echo's joining the team, and then now he's just gone. Yeah. Um, you know, like you know, <laughs> it's just it's it's a whole thing. But it's like, not, like, it's not like in Rebels when Sabine left, and then like three weeks later, like actually she's back and she's staying. It's like right. I get like Star Wars has put us put us in that mindset where that's what happens. But usually, like when an actor has a big emotional le- le- leaving from the show, when a character leaves because an actor wants to quit, usually the actor doesn't come back for all that often. Right, but I think Ron like Glover left Community and he never came back. <laughs> If we're just taking this episode as itself, like the reason Echo's not in this in this episode is because he would probably be okay with her, you know, going yeah. with Ventress, or at the very least, would be supportive uh, yeah. of the idea of her going off on her own because yeah, I don't he's, know if the, he's okay the cool with, uncle. 
Yeah, I don't think he'd be okay specifically with Ventress. But if, yeah, if, if Wrecker, Crosshair, and, and Hunter are like, no, protect her at all costs, he's the one telling her, no, actually, you should go to college out of state. Like, that's that's right. what's going on here. Right. Um, yeah. What were we talking about? I don't know. We got caught up on Echo. Um, <laughs> anyways, it's Domino it's, Squad. It's Domino, Domino. Oh, RIP. RIP. Uh, Chris, do you have any thoughts on on uh, Hunter and, and uh, Wrecker and Echo and their sort of position in this sort of uh, how, how this uh, this story changes uh, their position with Omega going forward at all? Um, it's such an interesting to do thing to do so late in a show. So that's that's kind of my opinion on it is it's, we don't have a lot of time to kind of like go through the process of seeing what this change does. Well, I, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, but I mean, this has kind of been the story all the way through, right? Like, yeah, Hunter has always Hunter and Wrecker in particular have always been very protective of. Alina. Yeah. And like, you know, the uh, Hunter and, and Crosser had that fight two weeks ago or four weeks ago or whenever the hell that was time is time is not linear um they um they had that fight and what what was it that that um crosser said that that triggered hunter it was you're mad because i helped save the kid and mm. you couldn't yeah like uh, you know they see their job as protecting her and mm. they've always seen it that way and and i think yeah it's it's a it, that there was always going to come a time you know a parent can can only protect their child for so long before the kid yeah. has to outgrow them. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose you know we'll probably see, probably them have to come to acceptance of that yeah. as the show progresses. But it's and it's, it's an interesting thing at this at this point. I I'm curious to see how they they kind of do that over that period of time. Yeah, that's left. All right. You know you know what I think it's time for. You you know what it's time for it's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's your favorite segment. It's my favorite segment. It's Chris's favorite segment. I think it's Ben's least favorite segment. It's time once again for Ben's Connection Corner. Connections in the corner with Ben. It's Ben's Connection Corner. corner. Do, 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 do. How's it going, everybody? Ben's Connection Corner is filmed in front of a live studio audience. All right, Ben, what have you got for us? Um, Nothing. <laughs> This character um, Ventress was in this yeah. this this yeah. If you, if you, you notice, you, if, you, if, you, if you pause at the right moment, you may notice a certain character that previously appeared in the Clone Wars. Um, no, I'm not not going to go there. I'm going to go there. Um, I will I will I will draw attention to. I don't. This isn't really a connection. This is just a a question of she she has her old lightsaber back? Mm. Question mark. Because it's a curved blade. In Dark Disciple, mm. they made a point to give her a different type of lightsaber. She instead of having a two, she has one. I believe it's yellow. And I mean that lightsaber was so iconic that they made it into a real lightsaber you could buy. I think at Disney parks. Mm, yeah. Um. And so, like, that's out there. But now, I mean. Since she died, she lost it. Now she's got her a curved blade similar to her old master, Dooku. So I'm curious what that that she, says about her character or what happened. I'm curious what just, why the creators. She, she loved it so much. She's like, you know what? I'm just going to build it again. I, I mean, I I doubt she would build something to honor Dooku, but I guess she would be used to that. I mean, it, and it is it is very cool design like a very cool design like the curved blade is something very unique to her and dooku um so yeah i i think that's an interesting idea so i i, I like that I, i'm curious to find out more tales of the With, jedi season two speaking <laughs> of tales of the jedi um dooku his blade was still curved when he was a jedi right i think yes Yes, so it's not necessarily yeah. a Sith thing. So maybe she's like going back to like honoring Dooku's roots before he fell to the dark side. It's possible. I mean, there is that whole. There's that whole. What's the 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 Dooku Dooku Jedi lost is the thing. Yeah, the audio the, drama. The yeah. framing device in that book is Ventress recalling or like going through the archives and like looking up like okay here's what dooku was doing way back in the day and how he fell to the dark side like she kind of tells the story like from her point of view so 
you know, obviously she knows about that and very curious. Um, other than that, um, you know what? I didn't do Ben's Connection Corner last week, so um, may as well go back to that episode. <laughs> there we go. And uh, mention that uh, Fennec mentions the Hexian Brood, and that's a that's a criminal organization from a Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor. Yeah. All right. Can I can I can I do a connection? No. Okay. All right. All right. One. Wrong corner. All right, one. So this isn't a connection to anything to do with Star Wars. Um, but it's, uh, it's a connection to, uh, it's, it's, it's the, the history of cinema. There's that scene when, uh, Wrecker and Crosshair and everybody, they're watching Ventress and Omega on the boat and, um, Crosshair's looking through the binoculars and Ventress looks right up at, uh, at, at Wrecker and, and like makes eye contact with him. Um, it's a, it's it's a great moment in in the episode and it i think it's it's meant to be a nod to the hitchcock movie rear window where oh. jimmy stewart plays a guy who who gets injured i think he breaks his legs and he winds up just having to like sit and uh, in his apartment for days and he's just looking out his rear window and watching what's going on and he begins to get all like suspicious of mm. uh the people that he's watching and he becomes convinced that like somebody's murdered their wife and everything. He's just watching them with binoculars and a telescope. And there's this moment um, when he finally gets noticed that the people he's watching notice him and they look like right down the lens of the camera. And he gets, and that's when he gets caught and gets noticed. And people talk about that moment as being like R rear window is like a movie where Jimmy Stewart's like a movie watcher and he's, he's watching the same way he's watching the people the same way we watch a movie where we're seeing the characters on screen, but they can't say us. They don't know that we're watching. And when he gets caught, it's like we as the audience are getting caught, um, uh, you That's know, snooping cool. in on these on these people's lives. So um, I, I don't think the Bad Batch is trying to make that sort of point <laughs> about anything. I think more likely just that whoever directed this episode, uh, whoever wrote the episode or somebody in the creative process along the line said, hey, what if we did like that rear window scene where Ventress looks directly at the camera? Uh, and that's how we know that she's looking directly at Wrecker through the, uh, the binoculars. So that's cool. That's, that's nice. uh, it's not, like I said, it's not a star Wars connection, but, uh, you know, look, cool. it's not Ben's star Wars connection corner. It's Ben's True. connection corner. Okay. I accept any and all connections <laughs> there's there's ben there's past mustard. Yeah, there we go. All right. It's, it I, has I to be a connection and it has to connect to me. <laughs> there, we go. there we go so an excellent uh abbreviated edition of ben's connection corner connections in the corner with ben it's ben's connection corner, corner. Do, 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 do. how's it going everybody ben's connection corner is filmed in front of a live studio audience Ben, do you ever regret that week when we were reviewing Andor, Andor when you're like, you know, people say there's no connections to other Star Wars things. So I'm starting a new segment called Ben's Connection Corner. Do you ever regret that? Do you ever think you were, you were, you thought, you thought oh, nobody's ever going to make a theme song and an intro for this. Every hour of every day <laughs> of the rest of my life. No, no, because, you know, I was all I was always frustrated. Like, I'm I'm into the connections, not just with Star Wars, like anything like um, I'm I'm like, oh, you see this thing in this Marvel movie? Like, I'm I'm all about that stuff. So, like, I just wanted a place to vent. Mm -hmm. And I it was all a scheme for me. It was all a scheme. OK, <laughs> you all fell for it. Ha 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 ha. You got I got you. There um, we go. Here we here we are. Cool, cool. Uh, any any other thoughts uh, on this episode before we hit uh, final thoughts and score out of the ten? I mean, again, beautifully animated and everything like that. There's some straight up. I need to go back and like watch it in slow mo and get <laughs> all of the like because I get. I mean, kind of connections. Like, there's some straight up like the shot of Omega doing this with the thing on her head, and then the shot is like directly like Ray sitting down, eyes closed, and mm. Luke's just like peering over her shoulder almost creepily. Like it, it's the same yeah, shot. It's, it's the same yeah. exact shot. We have we have a still of that up on the screen. Yeah. Frame that's framed. I, I I didn't clock that, but that's framed exactly like Ray and Luke in, in Last Jedi. This this very Last Jedi, as we've been saying about like the location and the 
the training sequences and and the sort of curmudgeonly Jedi ma or not even Jedi, just the curmudgeonly master and the eager students. Um, yeah, I, I dig it. I'm all for it. Here for it. And all those shots of Pabu like at, at the golden hour, just just gorgeous, just gorgeous. And like the sort of thing where you're like, are we getting a little too close to live action here? Like <laughs> we're almost at the place, almost at Never. the place. Never. Some of these location shots, you're like, that's borderline Marvel movie stuff right there. Like, I, I also love the shot where it's, at, I think, at, like Ventress knocks Hunter to the ground and then he gets back up and then she hits him again. And like, there's a cloud of dust where his body was. Like, it's like, <laughs> there's like that much, like there's dust, like, oh my God, animators, like you're, you're out doing yourselves. Like y'all are flexing at this point, the amount of detail you're putting into this. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's, uh, let's give some uh, final thoughts and scores out of 10 for this episode. Chris, why don't you start us off? Final thoughts and scores out of 10 for Harbinger. <laughs> so, uh, Harbinger. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, this episode was was great because of the overall plot of the episode and the fact that it was about force sensitivity and adventurous and the whole caper going on with the M count situation with the Empire. Like those were all of those like plot points and the dialogue around them was very, very interesting and very, very great. I think the overall tapestry in which the episode was laid below um, with just, you know, existing on Pabu and dealing with uh, a creature attack, I think was kind of some B-tier stuff. Mm -hmm. I think this is a big universe. I think you could probably get a little more, a little more interesting than that. I, th this just, this story has been told so many times over and over again in star wars stories and live action and animation in the movies everywhere and i i just i feel like there's got to be ways to do it that are that are new and not just okay well we want to have ventress come back and we want to have her interact with uh interact with omega so what do we do let's have them go out into the ocean and have a monster attack them like Come on, like I feel like there can be some more interesting mm -hmm. writing there. Like, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of, um, you know, just telling the story for what it is. Um, like, Ray wasn't really fighting a, a monster on Octo, and mm -hmm. it was fine. Like, you, yeah. you just tell the story for what it is. Don't need to shoehorn all this action in it for for no reason just to meet a formula. It makes the episode seem procedural and formulaic. So as a result. I have to mix if, if, if this episode wasn't about the force and Omega and Ventress, you take that part out. It's a six out of 10 episode. All that stuff with them is a 10 out of 10. So I have to average it out to an eight out of 10. I feel like they, mm -hmm. they didn't go all the way like they could have in this episode. I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's a way they could have taken last week's like a plot of Hunter and Wrecker and Fennec, you know, wrestling gators on the swamps mm -hmm. of Nolens. Uh, and had that kind of be the B plot to an episode where the A plot is Ventress and ah ah Ahsoka. Oh my God. Uh, Ventress and Omega um, doing like Jedi training. I, I wonder if there's a a way that could have been done. Cause yeah. I, I mean, I missed last week's episode. That episode was like a six out of 10. I was very, yeah. very, very mid. Um, yeah. Thank cro you. Crosshair, Crosshair and uh, Omega doing uh, meditation. A plus. Love that. Terrific. Yes. The other stuff. Meh. Uh, anyways, Ben, you're, we're not here to talk about last week. Why am I? Why am I yammering on about that? Give us your final thoughts and scores out of ten for Harbinger. Yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, it's like like it's it's a beautiful episode. I think it was a great way to reintroduce Ventress. Um, and I mean, I think using her in this way, I think was was great. Um, you know, it, it is, I, I like that they, there's not a whole lot of beating around the bush about Ventress. Like she shows up like within the first, like five minutes of the episode, it's, it's straight to the point. Um, and we get into it and we get a lot of good stuff and all the stuff that would come up between these characters being thrown together, I think is come up and, and handled quite well. I think that there, of course, there's some, some great dialogue, great action. Um, I will, I will concede I am. I'm a little. I, I was kind of on the verge of eye rolling 
when the mm. beast came up like i'm just like okay mm. again like i'm 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 becoming a, a wrecker like with just like another monster <laughs> why does it always have to be another monster like it it is like you're you, she feels like you're using this as a crutch i'm not a big fan of that i'm i'm fine with creatures i don't mind them but it feels like this is like a it literally is monster of the week at this point and it's a bit it's a bit much so I think that's really the only detraction I will say against this episode. Just like, you know, that was a little bit, but it's, it's, sir, it was a great moment. So I don't want to like be too hard on it. And I'll, I'll give it a nine out of 10, really. Nine out of 10 from Ben. Yeah. And I just want to say, I was just talking about last week. I said it was a, a, a mid episode and I stand by that. I do think like that, like the, the like action sequences of like them on the boat like fighting the gators like i thought that was really cool and like a neat yeah. visual that we hadn't really seen in star wars so like i like I, I all i'm saying is i'd like to take that and put it in a more interesting episode and you know yeah. I, like i said that kind of like visual and and that that sort of action sequence as a b plot to just um ventress and i nearly said ventress and ray ventress and omega <laughs> um doing See? the jedi thing i think that would have like made for like a really top-notch episode um and i will say like i'm i'm usually the one who's like stupid creature episodes stop doing them they're really annoying what i'm at the point now where whenever the point isn't just kill the monster kill the monster kill the monster i'm i'm like happy with it because there was there was a while there and mando is so freaking guilty of this where it's like every every time there's a monster just kill it find a new way to kill it um and i find that so boring and uninteresting the fact that at least it was and, and yes we've seen it before but like ventress using re reaching out with the force calming the beast like getting letting them get away like that like i like that better than kill the monster kill the monster so it didn't bother me as much as it might have and the mm. way that mando did a lot resistance mm. did weirdly did this a lot and rebels had this problem with like the exception of the pergol episode where it was like it was just kill the beast kill the beast kill the beast um bad batch has been better where usually there's like a, a another level to it and but that said yeah when the when the when the big sea monster when the, the when the kraken showed up i was like mm, again okay um otherwise though as as you both have said the four the 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 the, the m count tests i thought were really really great for a second i thought ventress was just going to take some of omega's blood and just do the like qui gon test too. <laughs> and i was so glad when it wasn't that yeah. um the visuals were stunning uh omega is such a like a it continues to be just like what a wonderful wonderful character that they've created like such an injection of fresh air into the star wars galaxy um and I love, like, I love her interactions with Ventress, where Ventress is so cold and cynical, and she's so warm and bubbly. And there's that moment where, like, Ventress grabs her face and tells her to stop talking and, like, moves her face. Um, I thought that was so good. I thought it was so, so good. Um, I'm really excited to see where this leads. Um, I'll give this one a, a, a strong 8.5 out of 10. All right. Uh, let's just go right to Ask the SWU, because I gather from what I'm looking at here in the notes you guys didn't get to much last week. Understandably so. Mm -hmm. Understandably so. So we'll start with the some of the ones from last week, and then we'll uh, we'll get into some from this week. So uh, this first one comes from Doctor Q seventeen, who says, "Now that Bad Batch has given us a meditation section a session juxtaposed with a a space safari trip, do you suppose that the show the show could present us with an equivalent of a Polynesian spa? And what do you suppose that would be juxtaposed <laughs> with? P.S. I await an animated version of the Polynesian spa video with Dee Bradley Baker providing the voice work. Lols. Uh, for anybody that doesn't remember, there was a terrific video of <laughs> Tamora Morrison right after he'd finished filming um, the book of Boba Fett on vacation at a, a Polynesian spa in New Zealand. Uh, like of him getting into the hot tub going, just finished work on book of Boba. Ah, oh, this is nice. Like it was, it was just Love strange, video. amazing video because Tam, Tam is just incredible. So yeah, I, I, I'm surprised we haven't seen like a spa planet in Star Wars. The closest, the closest I think we've seen, dare I say it, is the droid spa. In that no, no, no. Say, no. Go, go watch Evil Plans. I'm no. sorry. No. <laughs> Bye. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> 
to, uh, they're also i think on canto bite there's like one shot of people like in in robes like they were just getting a massage somewhere so maybe there's a little bit a little bit going there's on so delete is scene i think where the father of the years crashed through a spa or something mm -hmm. maybe i've Amazing. seen maybe i've not ah, my kiwis <laughs> <laughs> um all right kajira says oh my mortis gods imagine the scene where crosshair was asking omega who fee was when he goes into the ship and she also blurted out that fee is tech's girlfriend <laughs> how yeah. would you also imagine crosshair's reaction to that <laughs> laughing emoji like out of all oh. the members of the bad batch it was tech that gets the girl i imagine that i can just see like crosshair like freezing processing it with this like shocked like with his like stone face sort of like raising his eyebrows once rolling his eyes and then keep going without looking back that's how right. i think talk crosshair would yeah. react that is that is pretty incredible though it's mm. pretty amazing mm. I, I that is that was a scene i really liked in last week's episode when crosshair asks, asks who who he is and omega's like she's a liberator of lost artifacts and crosshair looks at her again she goes fine she's a pirate i love that was fine i love that and there was a brief moment at the beginning of this episode <laughs> this week when omega's going into the cave like everybody else i expect adventurous but i was like for a second i'm like it would be really funny if this was just another treasure hunt episode that'd be so <laughs> be so oh excellent my god <laughs> uh all right vlad sander says welcome to the bayou swu watch out for dem gators there's good eating all on one o dem you you it's don't like, have the right accent for that sorry let me, let me welcome to the bayou SW. <laughs> <laughs> that's more like it i what? think i think you have a spokesperson ben <laughs> Welcome to the Bayou SWU. Watch out for them gators. There's good eating on one of them. <laughs> you know oh, that. that. You, you, man, you you would uh, you fit right in down in Louisiana, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> I just I remember there was a SNL sketch from a few years ago of like um <laughs> I think Seth Myers was the guest host. It was after he'd left the show and they, it was, it was a talk show for, for liberals in Louisiana and Mac oh, Bennett God. hosts it. And he just, he's like, how about that? there, damn, damn Trump doing that damn thing down, down, down and, the, and the Congress and the impeachment down there, there, blah, blah. And I was like, it was incredible. And at one point I think they then brought out a, a like a guy in a biscuit mascot wearing a MAGA hat that they wanted Seth Meyers to <laughs> rastle. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty good. What, look it up just just for the Beck Bennett bit. Of, oh my! Uh, how about that there damn damn Trump down? Blah, blah. It's incredible. Anyways, <laughs> um. So okay, Vlad says so. Two things. First, Fennec has a mysterious contact who knows about the M count bounty and can find the batch with no problem. Ventress, she was a bounty hunter for a while, and it, and it would make sense that she would try to thwart the plans of the Empire. Yes, Vlad, I agree. I think that's one hundred percent right, and you will be proven right in a week's time. Oh, wait, he was. Look at that. <laughs> um, second, this has been bouncing around in my brain all week. We know that M count can possibly be transferred through blood. How do we know that human blood is compatible with the blood of other species? Some species can breed with humans, so obviously they are compatible, but Yoda species, Ithorians, Wookiees, etc. How how the blood that was incompatible, uh, how, how would the blood that's incompatible with humans be transferred? Don't they have wow. to take the M can't out of the blood? Yeah. The so I, clans out of the blood. Yeah, I guess it I like I that could be like what they're working on there on Tantus, right? Like there's all that stuff with the blood samples and that like weird machine that like ticks around that Nala Say is using. Like I feel like you know, the, whatever those experiments are, whatever questions we have about like how does this work can be answered by well that's what nala say is testing for or that's what yeah. Emory is testing for or that's what doctor and um, the, the doc, what the doctor is, is testing for like you know hemlock um, in star wars they were able to create super hyperspeed to go to another galaxy yeah like so if they can do that they could use blood from one species and have it affect another species like I, it doesn't seem like that much of a leap there mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think you're right. I think like there's, there's ways they can, they can work around it. Um, you know, does that mean you could get like a cross between Yoda's species and a human? I don't know. 
maybe we could. I, I you know, Star Wars is it it exists in that you know. I, I I tend to think Star Wars exists more on the the fantasy side of science science fiction fantasy than the science fiction side. Um, but it it so like why not like you can just do whatever, whatever you want. Yeah. With these things. Man, I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're getting into like hybrid territory with characters like, um, you, you know, Jackie, Jackie lawn from the acolyte or even Jason Sandula of yeah. like ha half and half characters. Cause of course that would be a thing because and different Cutla species are getting together. I mean, come on. Cut look kids are, uh, exactly. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to freak anyone out, but, um, <laughs> Humans are hybrid species between Neanderthals, humans, and Denisovans. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm, I have a feeling this sort of thing. Maybe not the specifically what Vlad is saying will be addressed, but like the the broader concepts will be addressed and hand waved away the way they usually are with Star Wars, and when you get into these sort of scientific questions. I got tiger blood in my veins. Got a donut's <laughs> DNA. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> Amazing. My uh, mama was a Wookiee and my daddy was a Yoda. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That's like first words. <laughs> there, there you go. That's what yeah, that's what they're gonna be. That's imagine gonna be. imagine Yoda, but taller and more hairy. <laughs> Love that Wookiee I did. I don't know if I want to imagine that. I don't know. <laughs> just, just wait. Just wait. They'll, they're going to do it one of these days. You just know it. <laughs> All right. Um, Vlad also says, bonus question for Ben. This is Stump the Ben. Okay. All right. What I'm was the bad. name of the Tusken Jedi who was brought into the Order by Kiadi Mundi? He was a general in the Clone Wars, survived Order 66, and, be, and eventually became a Sith Lord. But this has been asked before. I remember this one, but yeah, I, I was gonna say I, I know I, the answer. Look, to this. look, I, I, I could easily get this wrong. Um, I know he becomes Darth Crate in the Legacy comics in the future, and his real name is A. Sherrod Het. Correct. They that is not be. hard enough a question, dude. <laughs> Bring it on. Can that's like the most well-known EU character. Uh, Look, I read, I didn't read those bizarre. books, but I read the freaking encyclopedia. It's still down here over here. I, I've, I've memorized get, You get a that, second okay? chance. Send it another. Send it another question next week. <laughs> You'll get it this time. Yeah, I uh, Legacy Comics. I still think are some of the best that have been produced. So. Cade Skywalk. Oh my gosh, Darth Talon. Have they put Darth Talon back in the canon yet? I know they keep talking about it. Yeah, they keep talking about it, but the Rupert yeah, George has already happened. And was it is it Delilah Blue? Is was that her name? Yeah, Blue? yeah, yeah. 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 It is, it, it, the visuals, the character yeah. designs are out of this world for that. And I the, see that, and, and the storytelling was was just yeah. great too. Yeah. That first arc as well, like 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 the whole run is terrific. All fifty some odd issues, but like that first yeah. first six first first six issues, I remember reading those, just being like blown away by it. Yeah. I think and rereading general, it a couple years the ago. The general too. concept of like we're gonna do like a Skywalker story, but we're not gonna tell you like how it's like directly connected. It's like this is just a descendant of things, and then there's other characters, and it's way in the future. And like I, I, I kind of hope they they look at some of that stuff for for New Jedi Order and stuff like that. Not that they're gonna do stuff well, like that, but like they like the general feel and the general idea of it. I like. Yeah, like like so legacy was, you know, 150 some odd years after the the storytelling that had existed up until that point. I I'm, I'm like let's do that. Like let's do that, but let's like push it way far into the future. Like do Ma High Mangold, Republic but in the future. Yeah, like 200 years or do what Mangold is doing and do like thousands of years in the future. Do like 5000 years in the future where, you know, Ray says, "Luke Skywalker, I thought he was a myth." Like where people actually think Luke Skywalker yeah. is a man. Okay, yeah. here here's a here's a story pitch for you, and, and nobody steal this. It's my idea. Um, give me a story where it's so far in the future that we don't actually know if it's in the future. It's so mm. far removed we don't know, and they don't tell us where yes. it, it doesn't if it takes place before Phantom Menace or after Rise of Skywalker. I I like it. I like it. Um, all right, let's keep going. Uh, Martin Ingleson, Ingleston says, uh, with Hasbro announcing the Acolyte Black Series figures, who will be getting them and how many of them? They're all ready for pre-order by the time your show starts. Well, this is a week late, so 
really uh, haven't pre-ordered them. Um, I'm, I'm curious when are we going to get, when are they going to show up in Walmart or something? Uh, probably never. Um, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I definitely want to get some of them. I don't know yeah. if I'll wind up getting all of them. No. I think I when, I when I looked at it, the ones that I thought really looked like good and, and cool, I think I would want um, the Daphne Keen character, the like Padawan. Um, yeah. Want May, the uh, Amanda Stenberg's character. Um, Charlie Bennett's character. I'm just like, I'm gonna start. I'm like realizing I'm just going to list all of them. Charlie Bennett's character. I, I think he looks, <laughs> that looks really good. Um, the, 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 like the other two, I'm like, I'll probably wind up picking them up, but they, they, those are the three like priority. I think are, are those ones would be Daphne yeah. Keen, Amanda Stanberg and, and Charlie Bennett. I think I need to learn their character names. I'll get there eventually. Look, all I'm going to say now is that I've spent years trying to kick my black series, uh, addiction. Um, <laughs> and this, this might, this might be my gateway drug back into it. Maybe no <laughs> at, uh, at Toronto comic-con. I'm like, I'm not going to buy any figures. I don't have, like, I don't have more space for them. I want to save money for the summer, blah, 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 blah. And the only thing that would get me to buy anything would be if I found, uh, you know, season two Omega. If I found season two mm. Omega, that'll get me. I'll buy that and I'll go that. Yeah. Of course, I found season two, season two Omega. And then at that same booth, I found a figure that I forgot existed, which was pre Vizsla in the like Clone Ooh. Wars thing. And I'm like, all right, both of them, That's fine. Right. You're getting yeah. it. Nice. I, I, I love, I love walking in, I like walking into a random place and just like looking at figures like, wait, they made that figure? Like, <laughs> I, clearly, I, I've forgotten. Like, because I, I do keep up with these things. And I'm like, oh my God, that figure exists. Um, Yeah. Yeah, there was a while there I knew like everyone that was coming out, but now sometimes Same. they'll go into the aisle and be like, oh, 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 nice. I like that. Then there's other times where I'm like, why has to have you not made this character? Now we freaking got Luke and <laughs> right. Sabaoth figures now. That's a thing. And Mara Jade, another Mara Jade. That that four pack is wild. That the, the they announced it was the last command four pack, I think, of yeah, um yeah, Luke. Yeah. Joris, uh, Mar Mara, and regular Luke, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I like that's such a wild thing. Like, but it's in that like really nice packaging where it looks like it's the book, and so like you feel like it should stay in the book. But all of those figures look so cool, and like they deserve to be on the shelf and posed in interesting ways. So they got Joris in his in his in lightning hands, and yeah, yeah get to, it, they're they're a hundred bucks each. <laughs> oh my, God. it's just like okay, how what, what can I sell? What can I sell to get this? Yeah, which which organ can I sell? Um, <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, all right. Mike MC says, anyone else uh, have to up the brightness to see what was happening in the swamp in the latest bad batch episode? Yeah, we talked. I think when Struthers was on, we talked about this and like, it's it, it this episode too. Like this episode is very colorful and, and like the golden hour stuff is really, really beautiful. Um, but there's some of those scenes in the shadows with Ventress. I'm like, I can't see what's happening on screen they're doing they're too doing too much realistic lighting but without the contrasts of random lights and spots yeah so it, they need they need yeah. to make sure it's amazing going lights. and watching like normal movies and stuff and not animation or live action going like this is set at night like this is pitch black but you can see what's going on like what is the difference i mean on at, at the same point like i i very much dislike the whole blue hue, blue hue situation where they film during the day and they just put a blue hue over it oh, like, yeah. kind of, like, all of the sucks. rides of skywalker <laughs> yeah that 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 that's not i don't like the color grading it two night situation um, usually, but you know, at, at least put some creative lighting in there and, and have important things be within the creative lighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, there, there was a scene in, um, house of the dragon in oh, season gosh. one, I think like Matt Smith and, and Emma Darcy are walking along a beach and it's, it's supposed to be like nighttime or dusk and it's so clearly shot like at noon yeah. like the clouds like clouds don't look like that at night that's not yeah. how they look like it just it, yeah i love that show to bits but that was a scene where i was like oof, oof that they have on? problems with that because the end of game of the game of thrones last season had the, an episode was way too dark one of yeah. the little second or third to last episodes was bad yeah yeah um but yeah that did yeah they need to consider that for 
future stories because I feel like these ones are, are pretty much. Pretty it must much be it up. must be compressing a little bit on Disney Plus sure. because they they're probably screening it up at you know Lucasfilm with their you know beautiful IMAX Dolby all that crap. Yeah. And it looks well, great. And, yeah, and, and and I'm sure like. So like if if you watch the Clone Wars on Blu-ray versus the Clone Wars on Disney Plus or or when they were on Netflix, like mm. they look great on on Disney Plus and Netflix. Don't get me wrong, but like there's a tangible, noticeable difference between the the Clone War like like the Blu-ray versions of of of, of anything. Like we'll use Clone Wars in particular because Clone Wars Blu-rays exist, unlike Bad Batch Blu-rays. Mm. Um, so you can really tell the difference. Um, that for this sort of thing. So yeah. It just needs to just release these things on Blu-ray and don't wait two years to do it. And yeah, it makes release no Clone Wars season seven. Come on, it, it would be it would be so easy. Um, yeah. Last thing about Disney Plus, what the heck is their new logo and color scheme? Seriously, Awful. it's so. <laughs> what it's do the they only, do? The only thing, the only thing that's worse than that is the helmets intro for all the Star Wars. Ah, things. I knew you'd say that. Yeah, no, no I. No I, I I, 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 not... like, I like the way it like fades in like that. Yeah. That's kind of cool. But keep the keep the blue, the like Disney blue. What's this like weird? I feel like the thing? whole like the whole like zoom, click like that thing was just starting to become iconic. And then they get rid of it. I always would try and snap my own fingers in time with the click uh, as of <laughs> Disney Plus thing. Turned it into a game. I loved it. Now they're oh. now over. Rip. Yeah, I, I I watched the episode, you know, the other night and I thought my TV was broken. I literally thought <laughs> that there was some like weird filter on it, like the color settings got messed up. But then I was watching the episode. And I'm like, this seems OK. But like everything, it was, you know, so like golden hour on on Pabu that I'm like, well, maybe I'm just not noticing the tint because it's like already tinted from like the sunset or whatever. Um, but so I'm like, yeah, I think, I think my TV screen settings are off. They've got to be, cause this, this looks wrong. And <laughs> then I, after I realized after someone posted on social media, I realized, oh my gosh, this is what it looks like for everywhere and everywhere. And yeah. then I went on my, my rants everywhere about, you know, how it looks like a, a faded t-shirt or like, you know, you got something <laughs> wet or, or your printer ran out of toner, but just one color. <laughs> you know, that's what it looks like. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> not wrong <laughs> <laughs> amazing um all right so that that's the last last week's uh questions let's look at some questions from this week starting with this super chat from joel davis joel says an example of event events feeling diffused by additions to the canons canon is how in the old days order 66 feels not as impactful when you realize the jedi have been purged badly in the past and futures legends wise you know i'd never what? thought of that but like there were multiple Jedi purges, like there were ones in the ancient mm. history. I mean, legacy begins yeah. with a Jedi purge. I mean, we were just singing its praises, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think what still makes Order sixty six special, and and or how they can preserve Order sixty six specialness is that like the Jedi are, as Luke says in in Last Jedi, at the height of their power at this point. Like this, this is the point when the Jedi should be um too big to fail and if through their hubris they don't see what's going on around them and they fall victim they fall I, victim to order 66 and being wiped out as much as i want to see new stories and new things i genuinely would if it was done right i'm not talking about next year i'm talking about like 10 20 years down the road if we are into new stories post rise of skywalker and it's maybe not even ray involved it's new characters that we haven't met yet um a new jedi order maybe thousands of years in the future i would like to see a different spin on okay this some kind of dark side user is back and maybe there's a new jedi purge but we're not going to do it the same way we're going to do it a bit differently um how how do you do that i think that would be interesting i'm just like play here's here's similar things but we're going to turn it on its head and do something differently i i think uh you know i i'm i'll be very curious because we not only don't know the future we don't know the canon past either so we don't know what's because i think it's called the great jedi purge so that maybe maybe implies that there is some lesser <laughs> just, jedi purges in the past 
it was just like a fun time. It was really great. That was, that was that's why they called it the Great Jedi Purge. There was there was just like three Jedi and they killed two of them. That was the purge. Yeah, and, and like the, old, the other pur purges were like boring and kind of like un unfun. Whereas this one was great. It was the great right. Great Jedi Purge. Great uh, man, it was to totally totally a good time. Everybody enjoyed. Everybody enjoyed the Great Jedi Purge. Um, okay, great question, Joel. Good uh, good observation. Um, all right, what else have we got here? Um, <laughs> Matthew asks, question for the group. How do we feel about Asajj's hair? The Ventress hairdo. I think First it was a very, it was very interesting underwater. I thought that was fascinating how mm. they animated it underwater. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a testament to the animation. Cause I think, I think her being bald was as much a, this looks cool as it is. Yay. We don't have to animate any hair. <laughs> <laughs> and you know and now they're like flexing like we're not just gonna give her hair we're not gonna give her like a buzz cut we're gonna give her giant floppy hair that does all these weird things and moves every time she moves her head and yeah it, it flings back on her head when she goes into water um yeah it's just it's ultimately it looks it looks cool i think it's interesting again uh, you know like she had like starwars.com pointed out like when she was Jedi Padawan, she had hair and then she yeah. didn't have hair. And now she has hair again. I guess she was just shaving the whole time. I don't know well, if you I have mean, amazing hair like that. Why don't you keep it? She, it was, it was a choice for her. She was a choice. It was a choice. It's not a choice for all of us. Just saying. Just saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought it looked good too. I thought it looked good too. Um, all right. Um, Vlad, uh, Vlad Sanders posted um, this week, posted a challenge, Ben, for you and Joel. Name this legend's book. <laughs> I posted a, a picture of a page. Oh, this is good. This is good. Book. The first, uh, we're not going to read the whole book, the whole page. I mean, we no, could. I, I'll, I'll read the, I'll read, I'll read the first line. Uh, it was the Jedi Knights had murdered his fa family. Then the last line, actually, the last line is dot, 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 cut down while they pleaded for their lives. Dot, dot, dot. What book is this? Because I am, I'm scanning it. I'm trying to look. And it's this very like obviously there's no character names, there's no anything like that. There's no like really super specific identifying factors. This could be anything. Also, the page looks like an older book to me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm guessing this is Legends. This is an old EU book. If I don't know. I Jedi because that was in the news recently for being reprinted or something. I don't know. I, I'm gonna guess I, that, so that I it's. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I guess. Um, I I think it's um, Shatterpoint. Shatterpoint. Okay. Good guess. Good guess. Good guess. Good guess. I we actually don't have the answer. We'll yeah, Vlad. I was gonna say we, he didn't tell us the answer. We'll need Vlad to provide the answer for next week. <laughs> Um, yeah, I Jedi interesting is, is one of only two star Wars novels two star Wars adult novels, at least that's a first person story. Does anybody Ben stump the Ben? Do you know what the other first person, uh, first person star Wars novel is the one you mentioned was what I Jedi. Oh, the other one is yeah. one I actually have read. It's, it's the Luke Skywalker one that was released mm -hmm. what's recently. It, what's it called? Oh crap. <laughs> Dang, I can't even like cuz like he has a love interest. I can remember that book. It's been a it's, while since I read it. It's it's something it's something of something or something. Mm. I don't know. It's heir to the Jedi. Ah, I knew it was three words. That's four words. Damn it. See, I'm <laughs> stupid all around. Heir to the Jedi. Not a great book. Wouldn't recommend. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend. I thought it was all right. I thought it was all right. I'm gonna say this feels, this book feels um, old, uh, old republicish. So I'm gonna go with like um, maybe like a uh, one of the like uh, Darth Bane books, which I've read and love, and like I don't remember this passage in there, but I'll just say that because it feels kind of old republicish. So I'm going with going you know, with Vlad. Tell us for next week. We gotta know. We gots to know. Um, all right. Next up, Kajira says, if Ventress tamed that giant space Cthulhu or whatever that thing is, is it possible that Omega could tame the Zillow Beast next? Ooh. Ooh. That would be cool. I mean, I, I, I that doesn't sound crazy to me. 
Grogu ch- tamed the Rancor, so Omega's got to one up him. Got to one up him. Maybe the Zillow Beast. That would be fun. That would be interesting. Um, all right, Doctor Q says I'm back with a question for Ben. Do you think that there are any trainers on the spot this week? Jeez, Hugh, I thought we were friends. Jeez. <laughs> Do you think there are, there are any train related moments from Star Wars that hat loving gamer could turn into a Thomas the Tank Engine parody? The Rogue Squadron <laughs> mission rescue on Kessel could be a good starting point. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. May I speak for okay. everybody who <laughs> isn't in the Discord and say what? This isn't. What this the hell is even, going on look, over there? You look, guys are watching even, Young Jedi Adventures nonstop, and something else is going on here. What? Can is I just happening? say? Can I just say the people in the Discord are even confused by this? Okay, okay. not this isn't something that happened on Discord. It's something that happened on Facebook. Only people that the the three people that follow me on Facebook <laughs> are the people that think. So I discovered it was yesterday. Someone. Had redone, had redone the entire, you know, the 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 very iconic scene in Spider-Man Two where Spider-Man fights Doc Ock on top of uh, and inside a a subway yeah, car. The, the York, yeah. Um, yeah. someone had redone that scene. This is on my Facebook. I need I, now that I'm talking about, it, I'm gonna actually have to like post it somewhere else where people where people can see it. But somebody redid that scene, but in the style of Thomas the Tank Engine, the original, like the like the toy model train that you know a lot of us grew up with um and it's i mean watch the whole thing it's insane <laughs> it's insane it's as insane as you can imagine so now i i think the what is the question again i'm sorry uh, he uh, i don't even know oh um what what do you think there are any train related moments from star wars that hat loving gamer could turn into a thomas the tank engine parody uh suggesting the rogue squadron rescue mission on kessel could be a good starting point <laughs> Or, um, I mean, I, my my favorite train related thing is the 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 Clone Wars episode Bounty. I'm mm-hmm. just picturing a, a a giant weird face on the front of that train. Um, I don't know. Solo, I, I, solo the the train. Solo, robbery. that's a great great one. Book, Book of Boba has a pretty good train uh, train robbery sequence. I'm just I'm just curious how uh, the whole idea of uh, drug smuggling uh, t- uh, translates into a children's <laughs> TV a series. From, yeah, so um, hey, I'm I'm all for it. D- give me something. I need to figure out like what YouTuber or something actually did that and encourage them to do some Star Wars train videos. That would be cool. That would be cool. Okay, um, I'm just gonna say, Doctor Hugh, there is such a thing as being too niche. There's such a thing as. <laughs> Asking a question. I love that he asked me the question. He's just banking on me having to explain the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Love, love, love the questions. That's good. Um, Guilt Sir 10 says two questions with Ventress alive and appearing in future content. What are the chances that she could encounter Darth Maul of, fe- of a fellow Knight Brother or Darth Vader? Well, Ventress only faced Maul once and has connections to Dathomir. Uh, an encounter. Uh, an encounter with Darth Vader could result in a true rematch of the century. The duel on Yavin four in the 2003 micro series. Yes. I, oh I my feel, God. I feel like Ventress's survival could cause it, the inquisitors to hunt her down like Maul on Malachor. Uh, then he says, after seeing the new alien Romulus trailer, I wonder if there is a star Wars version of the Xenomorph from the alien franchise, a primitive unstoppable, unstoppable predatory race that will hunt down the protagonist. There are references throughout the clone wars, the Geonosian, be- uh, Ge- Geonosian queen and legacy of terror and the bad batch, the baby Zillow beast and the dark lighting. Um, and, but it would be cool to see a similar creature attack our, our heroes, uh, a similar creature attack our heroes as they survive to fight. Uh, so let's start with this um, Ventress meeting Maul or Vader. I mean, that I mean, Ventress and Anakin was a legendary rivalry in the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. I think it would be really cool to see those characters cross paths again. And you know whether they, whether whether I mean obviously Vader's going to know everything, but whether Ventress knows the truth or not, I think more stories where because there was a lot. Speaking of the EU and Legends, like there was a lot of. A lot of stories like that where, you know, Jedi or former Jedi or characters that Anakin would have known showing back up and then, you know, Vader hunting them down and and sometimes not ending well. Um, 
I like that idea. But, you know, again, at the same time, it's just like, how do you do that? Is it, does it cheapen Vader again if you have her walk away? You just brought her back to life. I'm assuming she's never going to die now. She's, she's, she's destined to stay alive forever because you can't do that. You can't kill her off again. So, you know, how do you, how do you play that out? We've already gone through that with Ahsoka. I'm just like, okay, she survived and, and there's all this kind of stuff. And I don't know, but I, that would be very interesting. Uh -huh. It would be interesting. I, I'd like to see her meet Maul again. I think that would just kind of be, kind of be fun. Like they, they, both of those characters are so good with the banter. Um, now you would be missing Obi-Wan who, you know, in, in that scene in clone, I mean, that, that, that showdown at the end of season four with obi-wan and ventress versus maul and savage is one of my favorite moments in clone wars like it's so much fun and just the banter between all those characters um i thought that i, I i'd love to see i'd love to see a couple of those characters back in the same room together i think that'd be interesting uh, yeah um and then yeah a, a different sort of creature attack more along the lines of alien yes yeah I want to I mean, see it coming out of someone's stomach. <laughs> I do do like do it kind of in the horror vibe again, the same way the the Legacy of Terror Brain Invaders uh, episodes did in the Clone Wars, but like I Star mean, Wars version of horror. Yeah, like I mean, I feel like Star Wars is, especially since Clone Wars, is not shied away from like doing homages to classic movies and like you know doing like this is the this is the clearly the alien episode this i mean come on brain invaders like that is it probably as close as it gets to like an alien style like horror genre type of star wars um so like yeah i mean that would be interesting like like again the the syllabus i think was definitely alien inspired so something more hardcore into that and we, we've 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 had dabbles with zombies there's clearly a, a, a fascination with some creators to like kind of inject the zombie kind of genre into star wars so like put some others in there i think if it's done correctly it really can be some interesting storytelling so yeah yeah it would be cool it would be cool uh and finally from martin ingleston says i'm so pumped for the acolyte that i started making a fan binder of all the piece uh, pieces of details that i can get haven't felt this much of a rush since the high republic i had to stop after wave two of phase one but continued with the easter eggs up until where i got them from stopped here's the proof of my obsession with the high republic that can be shared on the show i included a video uh we've got the video here ben is this video sound on sound off is uh, sound off sound off sound off okay so we'll uh we'll kind of narrate for everybody who's who's watching uh who's, who's listening along uh got a binder here with the the high republic high republic logo logo on it pretty cool opens it up got some pages in there oh wow these are like printed out sheets with like details from this is extremely detailed one of those, this one is of those like said this continuity breakdown it's pages on the villains so it looks like there's oh there's the nile and the drangir Oh yeah, and Avon Staros. Love Avon Staros. Ah, oh, Skier. Gotta love Skier. Yoda and there. All these characters are getting pages of their own. God, Lucasfilm, give Martin a book deal. Jeez, like, yeah, like he's I going read, to all this work. I want to nice. read this binder. This yeah, binder I read cool. that. Yeah. There's all the Jedi. Look at oh, that. Nice. And the pages on the Jedi and their masters. Nice. Avar Chris. Elzar Man. What a man. Phase oh. one. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> look at this oh it's that looks like there's this... spreadsheets in there <laughs> <laughs> it's That's amazing wild. this feels this feels like something someone would have done like 30 years ago yeah like with uh, without the internet of just like mm. i have to put this in book form i have to actually put this and there's like there's no visual dictionaries or whatever else like yeah. it's basically <laughs> making which, which is sorely needed like we need some more like good high republic and oh, and acolyte um yeah. soon to be uh reference material so that's Great. I think I think uh Charles Soul needs to be calling you. The story groups needs to be calling Martin. <laughs> yeah. Um they have the High Republic, they do. There is the um mm -hmm. there's the uh great there's the uh art of book that is currently oh, blocked. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can I've got it in the background here, but it's blocked by my name. <laughs> the the oh. name Chiron. I don't know how to get rid of those. 
If I bring, um, up, a, if I bring up a comment, that usually does yes, it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So I just I brought up that comment from Joel. Everybody can ignore it. Oh, there you go. Right there in the background. <laughs> And also, um, I have the um, the lightsaber book. I don't, I don't know. I actually, it's a, it's the lightsaber collection or whatever else. And there's there's High Republic lightsabers in that book, which is really cool. That is cool. I, the High Republic, I gotta say, Phase Three, really, really, yeah, uh, ticking along quite nicely. Uh, Eye of Darkness was a great start. Shadows of Starlight, so we got a good comic book series. Um, I just finished Defy the Storm, which was excellent. Uh, and the comics, the comics are going just great. They're the, both mm -hmm. the adventures series and the uh, and the mainline. Uh, phase three is is um, it's funny. High Republic, like uh, phase one, great start, strong start, enjoyed it. Then they did. Then they went back in time for phase two, and I was like, I don't want to go back in time. I want to keep the story going forward. And then I read phase two. And I'm like, this was so good. I almost don't want to go back to phase three. I want to stay with these characters for longer. So they have to like win you over every time. But now that we're a couple books into phase three, I'm friggin' loving it. It's just great. <laughs> just great stuff. All right. That's, that was our sort of extended ask the SWU for this week. Um, seeing as, seeing as we missed a whole bunch of it uh, last week, because they decided to <laughs> drop a bad batch episode and a trailer at the same time. Thanks, Lucasfilm. I mean, seriously, thank you. That was those both of those were a lot of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's also about uh, about where we're gonna leave things and uh, begin to wrap things up for this week. All right, so we'll be back with another episode of Star Wars Underworld Podcast, same time, same place, next week. That time is 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific every Thursday, and that place is on YouTube, Facebook, X, and Twitch. Again, shout out to all the bots walk watching on X, all 600 of you. Yeah. May, may I say, Roger, Roger. <laughs> So many Clankas. Um, we are Clanka inclusive on this show. Oh, yeah. Good luck <laughs> to you guys. All of them. R2D2, BB8, Chopper, K2SO, L3. Actually, can I tell a, a fun story from uh, one of the panels at uh, Toronto Comic Con? Um, we were talking with Claudia Gray about um, you know the interactions between the authors and the like Lucasfilm story group and, and the people making the shows and stuff. And she told us that it, when she was writing Leia, Princess of Alderaan, um, she wanted Leia to have a droid. And the droid name that she came up with, and this was before Rogue One had come out, was K2. And Lucasfilm came back to her and said, no, you can't <laughs> have K2. That's not a name you can use. So she went, okay, let me see what else I can come up with. Oh, I know. L3. Can the droid be called L3? And Lucasfilm came back and said, no. not Also not L3. At no point did they say, hey, Lola would be a nice name, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, Bloody Great. Cool. Too good at naming droids. Her name was Lola. She <laughs> was a sugar girl. Okay. Also, uh, they, they recently confirmed that Lola died on Alderaan, which is just so freaking sad. Wrong. This is just that's, that's a canon thing that we can do away with like right now like next time when when we get when, when vivian lyra player is, is 19 and playing young princess Le princess leia for the young princess leia adventures lola damn well better be with her and when she shows up for some action in the mandalorian um you know once they decide we can actually have this character instead of just having c-3po stand in for her she damn well better have lola with her i'm just saying heck yeah heck yeah um Follow us on social media at uh, the SW on Threads. Um, Dominic, thank you so much for hosting tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure, as always. Great fun breaking down this episode. And then so, so, so looking forward to uh, breaking down uh, the, uh, the remaining episodes of this season. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're in for a, a wild ride as we uh, reach the end, I can't believe it, of the Bad Batch. But, uh, yeah, great fun. Thank you again to everybody who came to the panels at Toronto Comic Con. That was so much fun. I uh, hope to have those posted soon so that everybody can watch them. And uh, yeah, great show. Can't wait to do this again in seven days time. You can follow Dominic on social media at DominicJ25. Ben, thank you so much for hosting as well. Oh, this was a pleasure as always. Not uh, nearly as stressful. Just having 
one new episode of Star Wars to talk about. Not a, not that and a giant trailer and a whole bunch of news on top of that. Um, so yeah, much, much more chill week this week. Um, a lot of fun and uh, who knows, I mean genuinely, who knows what in store for us next week. But I'm sure it'll be great. Um, if for some reason you want to hear more of this coming out of my mouth, you can go check out a new episode of IPC, which will be coming out shortly within a couple of days. We just recorded a new episode. We talked about Dune Part 2. We spent a good amount of time talking about how much the movie sucked and how much we thought that it absolutely ripped off Star Wars and we <laughs> ripped in a new one. Uh, it was just the worst movie. I can't believe no original ideas anymore, Hollywood. You just got to rip off Star Wars. Jeez, guys. <laughs> Amazing. You had me for a second there, Ben. I was about ready to <laughs> come down there. I know, there. the look on your face is like, what? It's like, how did you hate Dune? I'm like the only it? person in the world that says Dune Part 2 sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and you can follow Ben on social media at Ben Hart with no E for more hot takes just like that one. Spicy. And you can follow me at Seek3PO. Make sure that you... Check out all the other shows on the Star Wars Under Road Podcast Network throughout the week. We've got the Ray Side, Iron Cannon, Tells From Beyond, the Galaxy Tractor Beam, and more. Check out our Discord, where we have that wonderful watch through going through canonically uh, all of Star Wars in a chronological manner. The link Mainly for Discord. Young Jedi Adventures. <laughs> yes. Just it's, it's for now. Order. It's in order. Um, and uh, you can find the link to that in the show notes, in the description, in the caption, whatever text accompanies this video or audio, it will be there. Click on it, join the Discord. It's super fun and super easy. And uh, don't forget, while you're at it, to subscribe if you had in it to wherever you're watching or listening to us and uh, leave a review if it uh, lets you do it. Um, if, and if it's YouTube, uh, become a channel member. And thanks to everybody who has super chatted with us tonight and all of our current channel members. So that's it. We'll be back with another episode next week. But until then, for Ben and Dominic, my name is Chris. And may the force be with you. It's a wrap. I'm looking at like the ad for the Eras Tour on Disney Plus on Facebook right now, and like the coloring of the Eras Tour is amazing, and it just clashes so badly with that freaking deal. <laughs> it is a travesty. <laughs>